And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery. And I completely fucked up because this is not the monastery. This is Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have one, two, three good brothers. That being that being neutral, so don't. So I know you're I know you're about to say something, but don't. Um. I of course mean bro I of course mean brother in a temple brother way. So, ah, this is me sticking. Lady my Saber, in. Lady Saber got sister. Okay, she's got a point, Monk. Yeah, she yeah she does. So, we have <laughs> we have we have one we have one recurring good brother and one good one good sister and one new and and one new good brother. So first on first on the good sister end, since she decided to call attention to herself, because I get Hi. Be, because I, because I get I guess the loudest things come in the smallest packages. <laughs> I'm giving you a look, just so you know. <laughs> I know. Everybody gives me that look. <laughs> I give me that look. But we ha we have the we have the uh, we have the per we have the person who we have the one person who pro who probably ha who probably has who probably has more c more cat boys in their closet than Nerd Wonder, which is saying something. <laughs> and the and the and the re and the resident and the resident um Bayesian of <laughs> of the watch, good sister spoiler. And we have the and we have the man who is who is eter, who is eternally in a in a grudge in a grudge match with input lag run run by run by good old Murphy, good brother zero. And How's we have the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadare Enterprises, and the bane of my fucking existence, good brother Xenatrix. <laughs> This is the third and finale part of what I've called over the last few months the Exodus trilogy. Because as I mentioned in the past, I found it fascinating that I saw three mass exoduses over the span of 6 months. Just from just from a just from an outside perspective and that at first I was just going to do the just going to do the Exodus regarding um 40k and BattleTech which we've which we did. But then, but then other things happened, and I decided to expand the thing. And for this particular week, I des I decided that it that what better time than now, to to ta to roast over an open flame, the asshats of Activision and the bitches of Blizzard. I may as I may as well call I may as well call I may as well call them that because I'm pretty because I'm pretty sure and I'm pretty sure everybody in that stu in that place is in the doghouse these days. Gender equality, monk. Gender equality. Yes, we hate both genders equally. <laughs> Mostly because we hate everyone equally. What's the mood? Yeah, you can't. I can't be accused of bi I can't be accused of bias if I give everyone the same amount of crap. And as as we've said before, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are cremated equal. And don't mistake my laughter for anything but unbridled rage at some things because you cannot spell slaughter without laughter. <laughs> I love that thing. But but and truth truth be told, this was something that I figured I would get, I was going to have to do eventually. Then the lawsuits happened, and I was like, "Well, time to time to accelerate my plans and start calling audibles again." Because this week, our in our finale of the Exodus trilogy, we have what I call migrating from Azeroth to Hydaelyn. And I want I feel I feel that to set to set the stage because one because um one thing that one thing that I think we I think we need to address right now is. Why why am I comparing World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy XIV? I mean, obviously one is an MMO and the other and the other one is a, is a slightly smaller scaled MMO, as Nerd Slayer would put it. I well, think you mean one is a cash grab and the other is an actual MMO. 
Well, th there's that too. But you know how it you know how it is. It's always it's always a slow descent into madness before the exodus begins, and that's where we really have to kind kind of start kind of start things out. Now, spoil spoiler. I um, where did you ever did you ever dip into WoW? I don't think I get the feeling you didn't. I didn't. Yeah, but I I did. I went through. I was a I was a fairly regular subscriber all the way through. Um, Wrath of the Lich King. Um, I had, ma I had mainly played. Um, I had mainly played Warrior. Um, but when I start, when I started to, when I started to see multi-role specs coming up more and more, I started to notice a bit of a problem. Because when you have, when you have characters that can fill, mul that can fill multiple roles in the Golden Triangle of DPS, tank, and healer. You end you end up ha the problem ends up ha happening of what what is the what are the single role people have like it it would be very easy it would be very easy to argue well what why why should why should I why should I just why should I just why should I just be a a um warrior when I can do that and more by being a paladin obviously obviously there's there's a whole lot of wiggle room that can be that can be argued but the point is when i especially saw this when the when death knights came in especially especially with some of the with some of the bullshit that they had in pvp where they could re, where they could re, where they could resurrect mm -hmm. yeah i was there at those times yeah i i remember I, I didn't i didn't like it when gil could resurrect in third strike and i don't and i didn't like death knights for that reason too I'm sorry. I uh, I made that reference when the Dark Knights first dropped, and I saw that ability for PvP was going to be in PvP. I love Third Strike so much. I love Third Strike too, but Gil is bullshit. Yes, yes, he is. Yes. He is SNK levels of bullshit. Would you say he's Geese Howard levels of bullshit? N no, but no, not close. that far, but not far off. I don't even think he's Orochi levels of bullshit. He's Wolfgang Krauser levels of bullshit. Still, still SNK bullshit, but on the low end of it. Yeah, I can agree with that. So not quite Tri Ace hidden boss levels of bullshit then. No, that's just a death march. <laughs> <laughs> but in the in the early, but the now I will I will I will in. Of course, I have to bring up full disclosures in, in the fact that the creator of World of Warcraft, Mark Kern, has been on my show twice, and I've discussed I've discussed MMO design and tabletop design off and on with him um, over 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 the time that I've known him. Some cases, in some cases, yelling at him about certain things. That and <laughs> that and navels. It's Naval Friday now, by the way. Did you see he changed the rules? Yeah, I did. I liked his response. They're my rules. I can I can change them if I want. Missed opportunity. <laughs> he should have used the Darth Vader reference. <laughs> <sighs> Pray I don't alter them any further, Monk. Mm -hmm. But the but the the funny thing is is that in the early days it was a long fight to even to even get World of Warcraft off the ground. Because he had a lot of doubters cl um, claiming that this was going to be a money pit, because of because of how because of how much the thing was costing compared to other projects. Because you know it's going to take a whole lot of maintenance and thus more servers and the like than say multiplayer for StarCraft or co or co-op for Diablo two. Mm -hmm. And I in the now. I had I will admit that in the last few months I did I did a fair amount of research and there's a few names that I want that I want to thank for helping me get a gra get a grasp on the on the development and passage of time when it came to Warcraft when it came to World of Warcraft that being um Bellular Gaming Asmongold and Mad Season Show because uh, because obviously if I'm going to be doing this kind of research I want to get multiple perspectives but 
Winnick, but Zero, did you start in 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 vanilla or did you or did you start later? I started about mid to halfway, th about yeah, the mid to end of uh, Burning Crusade. All right, so you so you saw so that unfortunately means that you missed out on the blood plague. Yes, I did. I I, I remember hearing about that when it when it around when it happened because I had a bunch of friends playing in vanilla. A coding oversight so bad the CDC still uses it as a model for a pandemic. And <laughs> um, yep. I think Mar I think Mark had mentioned that he had warned them about about that thing before about that little issue before he left. He was already he was already gone when it happened, but mm -hmm. but he he had said, uh, guys, maybe you should maybe you should look at this whole thing with the pet. And I get and nobody did and then. And then, and then everything happened that that went down. Um, and I know that I know that they tried to recreate it when with um with Wrath, but you can't recreate something like that. Now, when do you rec do you recall do you recall what what um spec you mained back then, or was that or was that reaching oh, yeah. too far? Oh no, um. I mostly played um, shaman healer or elemental shaman if I wanted to do DPS. Oh, Other so, than that, oh, I played warrior. Oh, so you, so so you were, a, so you were a man of taste. Yeah. If you pick, <laughs> if you pick druid or or rogue, I would have said, I would have said, okay, so you're a fuckwit. <laughs> um. Yeah. No, I actually, uh, I don't like. I, I never liked playing a druid. And. But when, but when it came to when it came to there was there was certainly a, there was certainly a lot of pushes forward when it came to when it came to Burning Crusade and then later then later on with um with with Wrath, um. When when Wrath when Wrath went when Wrath went down, you had met, you had mentioned having a bit of an, having certain issues with Death Knights, um. So what I, what I'd like what I'd be curious about is what what was the, what was the canary what was did you see, some people have said that there was a bit of that there was a bit of um warning signs of what what was to come with wrath did you did you see that in hindsight uh, I would say when I look back at it I saw it but I never paid attention to it because oh. I saw the death Knights and I just pretty much was like well this is gonna be a broken ass class that everyone's gonna play I'm gonna steer away from that yeah it's um as odd as this may sound, Death Knights kind of reminded me of the Jedi problem. In did you ever play Star Wars Galaxies? I never did, no, but I do know what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah, the only reason that Jedi showed up at showed up in that game in the tail end of its life cycle is because Sony forced Ralph Coster's hand. He didn't want them in there, mm -hmm. and his reasoning. Which I think I think is I th I think is a good I think is a good reason to say no to that is that they would be an alpha class in his words. Oh yeah, easily. And Death Knights, especially especially given all the hype regard regarding the appearance uh, regarding the appearance, um, of the of the Lich King himself, that w that was people were going to be flocking to that. Um. But. But I believe. See, I'm trying to. Rem I'm trying to remember. I believe after that, w I believe after um, Lich King, I believe that was Mists. Yeah, I believe it was Mists of Pandaria. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which um, definitely get, definitely had. I consider Mists to be the little to be the to be an underdog story because it definitely got off on the wrong foot. But some of the stuff that came later on in, in its cycle, I think, was actually better but this I, is... go ahead i was gonna say i uh i i actually enjoyed pandas it added a lot of nice good flair a lot of good story was actually pretty decent and uh the only thing i disliked was the raids the the end game raids and their mechanics were absolute dog shit and it's i could which um i think we should get into that to a, for a bit what did um, in your opinion, what ma what made a good raid get back in WoW, and what made a bad raid? Uh, well, I didn't do a lot, a lot of raiding back during that time. Mm -hmm. uh, I've honestly done more 
that stuff think later on but um actually it was lich king when did all my reading but for me when it was pandas it was it was everything very it was very like story driven like you had to listen to lots of talking which in final fantasy they make that work but we'll get to that obviously later um mm -hmm. uh it was also like some of the mechanics were like if you do not do this exact thing everyone has to do this exact thing or be at these exact moments and if one person screws up it's a complete wipe that is bad. If if you should be allowed at least a couple mistakes before it's like, oh well, okay, not enough DPS. Now we wipe. Mm -hmm. It was just like if if no one if everyone wasn't on point, you got heavily punished, and it just made it not fun. I'm pretty sure you pro you probably heard some people defend it, saying you got to pay more attention. I remember yeah. The, oh god. Oh yeah. A lot in operations in um the old Republic. Like, how do you prog that? It's it's one one per, one particular. Um, there's a term that there's a term that I've used when it comes to discussing difficulty that I call hand breaking. Um, Zan, if if you don't mind, could you give them the skinny about what hand breaking is? Um, hand breaking is essentially the opposite of railroading. Um, mm. It's as many hurdles put in your way for no other purpose than to stop you from doing something like another, a handbrake on a car. Yeah, I got you. another, another um, interpretation is when you're put, when you have an obstacle that where the solution is far too obtuse for you to come, for you to come up with the solution naturally. Um, point and click adventure games have, have been a recurring. Um, culprit King's quest. Yeah. <laughs> King's quest has been my whipping boy for most of my life. <laughs> King's Quest. <laughs> also, Monk, uh, I, I I think I have to correct you from earlier because I'm I'm pretty sure I'm right on this, but uh, I pretty sure Cataclysm was after Wrath. Oh yeah, I fully forgot about that. <laughs> you know, the thing that inspired something else we'll talk about later. Let me let me let me double. Oh, check. I actually forgot about that DLC. Jeez, <laughs> I played through all that too. Pretty sure Cataclysm was before Mists. I'm pretty sure. I never played WoW, but I. <laughs> I remember I, people around me talking about it. Yeah, um, there was there was one thing in. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, I, yeah. I was I was I was wrong on that. Um, so we should we should we should br we should bring up um, Cataclysm and the idea the idea of doing this massive reset is certainly was certainly a bold thing to do. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it plays out. Oh. Um, Square but, Enix a few years later. Uh huh. It kind of did. But <laughs> what? Um. I I remember I remember a lot of I remember I wasn't there I wasn't there for Cataclysm, but I remember a lot of people really not liking Cataclysm for for some reason. It uh, it made questing kind of all over the place. Uh, for at least for me, that was what it was because it turned it turned uh, like. How certain areas in Final Fantasy have multiple levels of areas, like, you know, there'll be tens and then there'll be thirties and then you know, fifties and sixties over there. Kinda like that, but it was even for the starting area people too, it was all over the place. Mm hmm Oh. Now, of, of course with we already mentioned the whole thing with mists. I'd say I'd say one of the, one of the groundbreaking things with mists what were the uh, were the islands. Oh yeah, definitely. That was fun. Oh, uh, even the people who don't like mists will begrudgingly like those. Um, with cat, with um. But I, I get the feeling some. I get the feeling another issue that people ha that people may have had with Cataclysm, and maybe you had this as well, is just because of, because of the because of that event, um, a lot of the visual variety ended up getting down back. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I don't think it bothered me that much, but it was kind of a letdown. Oh, the main reason—the main reason that I bring that kind of thing up—is one of the things that Blizzard was very good at, as um, is vi is visual design and visual variety. Yeah. Oh. So so have so having a whole lot of wasteland in in that is not going to be as interesting. Is. It's not, not that's not the, that's not to say that you can't make wasteland visual appealing because Kasher and Sins exists as well as or, well as near. 
and looking at you know any any part of a uh, of um the Thanaland wastelands in JFF fourteen again. <laughs> like it can it can be done. It's just not gonna be it's just not gonna be easy. Mm -hmm. But when but um there is there is one th there is one thing that I did notice in my in my research and, and drawing from my experiences that maybe it maybe I'd I'd be curious your take on this, but I can't I can't help but get the feeling that put that um having so having so much of an emphasis on ge on gear progression was was a was set was setting was setting up for problems down the road. Oh yeah, <laughs> easily, and it kind of just reminded me of one of um. I don't remember who the interview was with, but they had like a Q&A thing. And when they were asked about how they were going to fix world PVE and just the damage numbers, because some of the bo like mobs out there were stronger than uh, hardest raid difficulty stuff. And literally the response was just, oh, take off your helmet of the Azeroth and everything will work out just fine. Take off your glamour and you'll do fine. And it's like... Mm -mm. That is the most toned. De I didn't. I didn't even know about that. About that. That is. That yeah. Is I want. I can. I can response. send you the video I saw it, and it was a comparison of Final Fantasy fourteen versus World of Warcraft when it comes to apologies. Oh, they pro. They probably brought up the "you don't want that" thing, which we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, don't you have phones? That's oh, a whole. That's a whole different franchise, idiot. It's a whole different franchise, but the same company, asshole. <laughs> but one of the, one of the th I didn't really notice this until until Pandaria because I like I said I skipped Cataclysm. But there was there was one thing there was one major change that I that I saw as a canary, and I'm curious if you saw this as well, Zero. Um, the the rapid shift away from tech tr away from talent trees. Into into this slot like system that was also being used for Diablo three. Yeah, I noticed that. I remember the uh... um, done in the name of streamlining, and I f I felt th I felt that it was a bad idea because you're di you're diminishing the value of individual leveling, and you and that and that. The fact that um, people want, to, and this is something I've this is something I've criticized D and D devs over. People want to personalize. When you bottleneck their ability to personalize in the name of making things simple, all that you're doing is you're is you're is you're forcing them to play the same character builds more often than not. Yeah, no, I can agree with you on that. Like I. Uh... I remember when I was switching between Elemental and Shami around when they implemented that that tunneling and it didn't feel like I was like oh well me and this if if I join another shaman we're both going to be pretty, literally the exact same and mm -hmm. it's just just going to see who's going to be able to push their buttons better and the, and well COD, COD, ha, COD has had that same problem it's the reason why a lot why a lot of COD <laughs> players hate those three lane maps. Because mm -hmm. then it becomes a game of who can shoot faster, and tur and turns all the weapons into just SMG ruling everything. Um. But when but when it came to and you one would one would think one would think I would have been all I would have been more all over um, mists because that introduced the monk class and well I got to break my gimmick. <laughs> although when it although when it came to when it came to the specs of the monk, the only one that I ever really played was Brewmaster, and that is probably the best. It was. Oh. But then now, then of course there was war there was Warlords of Draenor, and by that point were you out of the game? But by, by then, or or were did, did Warlords of Draenor was the last one I played. Yeah, that that I, one was. I, <laughs> Go ahead. It was bad, but I it was for me it was uh, with Catacly with the the release of Cataclysm, I saw the uh, it's like oh I always made the joke and it really came true that well Blizzard just is just now going to become the next Call of Duty with their expansions. 
Yeah, because they started doing this whole thing of releasing ex releasing from Catac from Catac. Well, every two years. Yeah, every two years, which is kind of funny because there was only a one year gap between Burning Crusade and Wrath of the Lich King. Mm -hmm. Um, but then after that, yeah. they decided to do this two year cycle, which truth. Yeah, it was. So it was also you could tell the quality was drastically dropping with each one too, compared to like Lich King. Probably because they didn't have enough time. Because it's not just the expansion; it's all it's all the patch episodes in between them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And when you're on, when you only have a two year gap, you don't have as much time to do the, to do those patch episodes. I give the I give BC and and Wrath a bit of a pass on this because that hadn't really been established yet. Yeah. But and when it and obvious, I'd say I'd say the I'd say one other one other problem that ended up happening is tr is trying to trying to trying to dial back on elements that that would br that would br that would encourage exploration, like the way the way the, the way things like the way things like um, LFG and LFR worked, you know, looking for group and looking for raid. Mm hmm. Um. Because you could, because you could just put your name in that, and then be on a wait, and then be on a um, waiting, and then be on a waiting list, instead instead of going out, instead of going out there and finding people. Oh. Again, FF14 proves to have the better implementation of the same idea. Yeah, but we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> now, when it, but I don't, but I'd say I'd say it was around. I think in I remember in Cataclysm there were plans to do eight to do this t to do this um Titan forging mechanic, which on paper seemed really interesting, but for some reason it never came to fruition. You know, I now that you mentioned it, I actually do remember because I was keeping up with WoW mm -hmm. with a lot of the in-depth stuff around that time, and yeah, I do actually remember that vaguely being a th mentioned and talked about, but yeah, it never happened. Well, the the in, I'd say I'd say the incarnation of it that happened was, uh, was was, um, art was artifacts and that's artifact power and then later on Azurite. The idea was the idea was the idea that they had that they had claimed was it'd be a way to to get to possibly have a new interpretation on talents that you may have over that you may have overlooked or dismissed. Mm -hmm. Um. Which is nice and all, but there's one. Pr there was one problem. It's all fucking passives. Oh man, I didn't even know that. <laughs> it was. It was. You're tr you're trying to make this big deal about how you have this artifact that's going to be leveling with you, and it's all passives. Not in not in all thing things like increasing mastery or discipline. Which who the fuck uses those? Now, obviously, I'm obviously I'm pretty sure some will argue about me on that until they're blue in the face. But the point the point is is that, and this is something we've this is something we've brought, we that Zan and I have discussed in development of our tabletop project, a passive modifier, as a reward for advancement on its own, is not satisfactory. I can agree with that actually. Yeah. Yeah. We um as an aside with the, the the tabletop game we're developing is a is a Final Fantasy based one um and we try to go with a lot of more um risk and reward mechanics you, the thing you get is going to be something that gives you stuff but you're going to have to balance that thing with something that might come with some risk we try to do that or tricks gimmicks things that the interaction is unique and interesting mhm mm mhm mm we don't want to do. We don't want to do. You le you level up and you get a and you get a plus two, and you get a plus two to this one thing. Yeah, yeah I gotcha. Yeah. Oh. Now, I do find it funny that Warlords of Draenor was the one that was the one that was so bad that they publicly apologized for. Um. And there and there were some good things. Obviously, the horde. Had the better had the better story, but that's not saying much because the horde always has better stories. Yup. <laughs> when there is a story. Mm -hmm. And there was <laughs> and there were some interesting raids, but the problem the problem was there was a whole lot there was a whole lot of stuff that was just left on the table. 
left off left off the table. Um it seemed that Legion was that was them trying to course correct. But unfortunately for me, Legion will always be remembered as the as as the one that gave us the infamous you don't want that moment when somebody asked about class about um legacy servers since uh, well the original Guild Wars servers are still are still up and there's I think there's other games that do um legacy servers or the like. Wasn't that also shortly after Nostalrius was closed by C and D? Yes. Yes it was. Mm. And then vanilla became a thing a few years later. Yeah, and the the big but unfortunately the big oh. problem with um classic mm. was a, was a la- was a lack of support. Of course it was a lack of support. They didn't think anybody actually wanted it. No, they un- they underestimate they they ended up filling up their servers way too quickly. Yeah, they like I said, they didn't think anybody actually wanted it. They 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 were making classic as a way to cut up the dissenting voices and get on with what they wanted to do. And then all of a sudden, there's such a huge influx, like, uh uh-oh, servers crashed. Oops. You'd think that having Mark deliver Hunt deliver thousands upon thousands of signatures would have been a hint. Oh, they don't care about Mark anymore. (laughs) Are you kidding me? The current Blizzard the current Blizzard would tell Mark to fuck off. Well, Ian, Ian (laughs) probably... Oh, I, w- I would say something about Ian, but I'm told I'm told it's in bad form to mock the disabled. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, tr- but in in all fairness, Legion was better received. But and it de- it felt it felt like on paper the cl- the closing up the closing of a story arc, like the cl- the closing off of the of the whole. Um, the the whole burning legion story arc that that goes all the way back to the to the old RTSs. Mm-hmm. But speaking of the old RTSs, they tried they tried to do a soft reset with Battle for Azeroth, and br- evidenced by the fact that the cover art for Battle for Azeroth tried to do tried to call back to the old Warcraft orcs versus hu- orcs versus humans um, RTS, and. This is this is where you and this is where you started to see um, a lot more solo elements. That and they re, that and they they um, rechristened a- artifact power as Azerite. But but the problem was that for you have an MMO where you're doing a whole lot of solo stuff. There I is, mean, again, Final Fantasy XIV has a lot of that and does it better, and we will get into that. Yeah, I just have to keep bringing it up. I'm sorry. Um, of course, of course, um, Shadowlands has been has been the has been the nadir with them going way too far into all this cosmic stuff, which is, which is why um, Bellular did a forty minute video about why the lore feels, um, fe- feels so detached. Of course, it doesn't it doesn't exactly help that one of the, and you probably noticed this as well. One of the more one of the more popular characters in in Azeroth. Over the years, became insufferable. I am, of course, Sylvanas. talking about yep, Sylvanas Windrunner. I was gonna say you're talking about Sylvanas. Mm. Sylvanas used to be cool. Oh yeah, she used to be badass. And now it's just get that. And oh god. Now she's a Chunibio. <laughs> you may want to explain what a Chunibio is for the audience. Sure. So Chunibio is is something that you've heard if you're weeb enough. Um, it's a term used. In Japan, to literally translates to eighth grader sickness, or technically middle school second year sickness, because they have a different yearing system than us. Mm-hmm. Um, at least in the U.S., I'm not going to speak for any other country. But uh, it's it's a sickness that you think you're cool doing edgy, cringy things, um, even well after you're out you're out of middle school, essentially. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the most common tropes to do with Chunibyo, the dragon in my right arm, it won't settle. There you go. That's the best example I can give. Uh. <laughs> so Chunibyo, yes, Sylvanas has become a Chuni. Um, I've seen I've seen other people refer to her as a, as a Mary Sue, and 
Um, oh my god, yes, that's uh, that's so true. Um, and I'd say I'd say I'd say one I'd say one of the that's I'd say part I'd say part of it is the fact that she sp- that she just steamrolled all the other all the heavy hitters within within the within the horde and then steamrolled the li- the Lich King. I mean, yeah, it's not oh. Ar- it's not Arthas, but sti- but still, still were, it's yeah. the fucking Lich King. People were hyped up to see to see that fight, and it tur- and it's just over in a minute. Like I said, it's the fucking Lich King. The Lich King is different from Arthas in the fact that the Lich King took the erosion of Arthas's mind and made it complete. Mm-hmm. It, it was it was not Arthas in that armor. Arthas was just the vessel. The fucking mm-hmm. Lich King's this big, scary thing because of the fact that it can so so. Uh, completely corrupt someone who was previously incorruptible. Mm-hmm. And it had been doing that before he even touched Frostmourne. At least that's what's implied in Warcraft 3. Yeah. yeah. By the way, side note, no one ever, ever... Uh, do not get rid of your original copies of, of Warcraft 3 because, you know, Reforged is still a pile of steaming shit and they still haven't restored the original on uh, digital distribution. Yeah, I know. I'm still... I will forever be butthurt that because I don't have anything that has a disc reader, I technically can't play Warcraft three because I only own my physical copies. Mm-hmm. B- way to way to encourage way to encourage pirates, right? Although per- personally, what I'm salty about is the fact that in doing this, they ended up killing off the mod scene, which was, which Ugh. Was- yeah. Ever. He seems to be doing that these days, though. Um, thank you, Take Two, for killing most of the GTA mod scene. Uh, thank you. Oh, who else was it that kills? Uh, it was somebody who kills mods all the time. Games Workshop. Even... Did, Games Workshop went on a feeding yeah. frenzy. Um, we've we've gone over that in our previous episode, though. Yeah, I do take. I, which is why I found it funny that when Microsoft re-released a, the Age of Empires games, they're like, one, you can make mods for both. And two, if you had the original Age of Empires, you can get the remaster on a discount, and the mm-hmm. and the multiplayer is cross compatible with both. <laughs> so, apparently, someone in Microsoft likes money and knows how to continue to keep people happy enough to pay them. Mm-hmm. I suppose that's to be expected from people who fuck up so often they know how to unfuck up their fuck ups these days. Yeah. Although, fuck you, Windows Eleven, eat shit and die. <laughs> but of course, of course, we, but um, some there was one thing that Bellular had had point had pointed out is that is that for the longest time, the the narr- the narrative when it came to the player character was that they were not a chosen one; they were just they were just one adventure of of many in the in the world of Azeroth. But over t- but over time, apparently. That started to shift into you being some kind of chosen one, a de facto chosen one, yeah. But this, but the story, but the story, but the, but it, but it isn't willing to fully commit to that kind of thing. And we'll get, to, we'll get to that, we'll get to that in a bit. Um, I think there's also the fact that people are not happy about this idea that the true mastermind behind everything that had happened going all the way back to the RTS trilogy is this Zoval guy who nobody fucking heard of up until this point. I don't think he existed up until this point. Yeah, they 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 had tried to say that he that he was that he was indirectly res, that he was indirectly responsible through some 40 chess bullshit in starting in causing the in causing the fall of Arthas and the and the creation of the burning legion but nobody bu- but nobody bought it for well, obvious uh, reasons it's you're it's flat it's flattening the world not only is it flattening the world it's outright removing the badassery of all of the characters that came before by saying that they were nothing but pawns and never realized it mm-hmm. it's it's it, it, you know what it reminds me of what Harrison Bergeron, the handicapper, the handicapper general. Everybody has to wear weights and, and certain goggles and everything so that everybody's the same. Nobody can achieve too much or too little. Mm-hmm. But I, that short story is is 
meant to be another cautionary tale that I hope nobody else fucking... I swear to God, if anyone out there thinks that even Harrison Bergeron should be a fucking a manual on how to run the world, I'm going to find you and give you a Claymore enema. <laughs> which Claymore? Guess which. Both, bitch. <laughs> There's a reason it says front toward enemy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put the front in your rear. Mm -hmm. Claymore enema. Motherfuckers. But the there is also the there's but there is there is one elephant in the room with uh, with WoW that is controversial and I and I think we have I think we have to address. In fact in fact Mad Season did it did an hour long video talking about this. Let's talk about level boosts. Oh. I'll just no put my my note here that is going to be on that tick counter. Another thing FF14 does better. <laughs> yeah, if I if I had if I had the if I had the graphics to have, to have a ding counter, I'd put that there. But yeah, this the idea. The first off, oh, first off, the aggressive. I'm not sure if this started in WAD or if it started earlier, but. Around the time of Watt, I started to see a very aggressive monetization for a game that you already have to have a, you already have to have a subscription for, and you already have to pay like well, what's it, sixty bucks for the expansions? Yeah, they were sixty, but I believe they finally dropped around to a reasonable forty. But even then, with the content, it's not even reasonable. Mm -hmm. And and the whole the. Our, the argument is, the argument has always been that the that the reason for the le, the reason for these level boosts is to allow is to allow new players to j to jump into the expansion with their friends. I don't know about you, but I always found I always found that argument to be bullshit, and I am sick I am sick of companies hiding I'm sick of developers hiding behind my new players simply because you. When the game was new, you and everybody was a new player. You didn't have this. Not to mention the fact having a new player level boost means that they a don't experience the natural progression of their class and thus do not learn how to play. They don't end up getting, and... they don't end up developing the muscle memories in terms of things like rotations <laughs> or even learning you know how to tweak and play and. And customize, although you know at that point customization in WoW was pretty limited. They don't they don't get all of that. Uh, they don't get the chance to say go through older content that's actually still really fun to go through and possibly earn some of those cool raid mounts or whatever. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know the WoW tokens now do that instead, but that's different. Which here's here's something I find funny: real money trading is 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 bannable, but. But um, but for, but but tra but trading with but trading with WoW, but getting wild WoW tokens for the same effect is perfectly fine. That's because the money has to go through uh, has to go through Blizzard first. See, they they they, they don't like real money trading because they don't get a cut. Pretty pretty much, which is probably the also reason why they've. I'd I'd say I'd say the other the other issue with with this whole. This whole diminishing of of the reason to explore is that you end up having less opportunities to catch bots. Yep. Yeah. Also, um, how the games treat real money trading. Another thing, Final Fantasy fourteen does better. Ding. Now, per I um I made a bit of a bold statement about a week ago, where I where I said that people people making excuses for level boosting in WoW. And people demanding an easy mode in from soft games are cut from the same cloth. Because the be, and Mad Season had also brought this up in his video, that you're essentially arguing this game this game isn't this game isn't for me, so it must cater to me. Mm. Or I or th this game has some sort of obstacle that it must cater to me, in order in order to in order. In order for in order for it to be worth my time. Essentially, instead of accepting that not everything can be made for everyone, and in fact, not everything should be made for everyone, you instead want to force everything to be made for everyone. 
but really just you. you everyone is you because you're a narcissistic shit. Mm-hmm. This reminds me of Hamburger Helpers. Freaking. <laughs> Can we just make a skip all gameplay button? You mean just make a movie? <laughs> Hamburger Hepler. I haven't heard her referred to that in a few months. <laughs> uh, I think we did that in a discussion just shooting the shit at one point, Monk. Yeah, we did. <clears throat> I, think, I think around that time I was talking about some of the bad takes she had during her during her tenure with with um, Bioware. Yeah. Um. But when but when it comes when it comes to the reason why the reason why I'm why I was always against that kind of that kind of level boost is be is sim- is simply because of the fact that in do in doing so you end up you end up treating a you end up treating a full you end up bottlenecking what content you're going to experience in a given expansion. If the argument is that if the argument is that um you want yeah, you want pe- that you want people to play that to play the end game content more quickly. That's all, that's also that's also ver- that's also very we- that's also very weak because there's nothing there's nothing stopping some sort some some sort of some sort of um guide some sort of guidance thing or even even just setting up groups again. There there's been a growing irony that wor- that World of Warcraft ha- is an MM- is an MMO that fr- that discourages interacting with other players. And I think that I think that I think that is the reason why why we why the subscription bleed ended up happening. Player interaction. Ding. Um <laughs> you think that's why um the stereotype of WoW is that like people are toxic because they're not <laughs> used to interacting with each other. I guess. Uh, I, as tempting as it would be to go to go that far, I'd say these days the toxicity is is the whole is the whole zero sum game thing. Um, because mm-hmm. we because we've seen we've seen that we've seen this kind of we've seen this kind of toxicity when it comes to. When it comes to games, workshop stands, and Zan and I's favorite commissar antagonizes those people on a daily basis. Buttermilk bobs. <laughs> he calls them buttermilk bobs. For any for anyone not knowing who we're referring to, Commissar Gamza on YouTube. He's great. He talks about how fuck Games Workshop, print whatever you want, and uh, tell the buttermilk bobs to fuck off. He has routinely made fun of made fun of them when it comes to. Th- when it comes to 3D printing, and the, and they are, they argue that there's nothing wrong with, say a say a um, Thunderhawk or a Land Raider costing eighty bucks, or that seven hundred dollar Thunderhawk from <laughs> yeah. Forge World. Oh yeah, I or forgot about that. My models that I own. If you want to get to talk about those, oh my god. I um. I have don't... two three hundred and fifty dollar models from them. Zero. Three hundred and fifty dollars will get you a very good resin three D printer. You want know something funny? I actually didn't pay for either one of them, and one of, I, I have a double of another one that was I bought from China for fifty bucks. <laughs> right before the company went under and got cease and desist on their products. Oh, fun! Yeah, I, I got lucky on that. Indeed. But the. Uh... The whole thing is that there's a sense of entitlement. Oh yeah. With uh, with current, I, I would say current fans of WoW, the few fans they have left. Um, not only not only entitlement, but also also some some de- some degree some degrees of of cult shaming of en- of anybody who anybody who has doubt. <laughs> you mean like how they tried to shame Bellular and Hasman Gold? You guys, you guys moving to FF14, huh, yeah, okay, chickens, stop having fun! <laughs> that was that was the reaction. Yeah, pretty much. That was much. a fucking reaction. Also, well, I, also aside, Pyro, right? Pyro and <laughs> Jesse and... Everybody, yeah. Everybody. Everybody that bled over that was major WoW, uh, WoW streamers. I think, wasn't Jesse one of the ones that Asmund followed? Like, he watched her having so much fun and was just like, let's go do that. <laughs> yeah, I think it was. It might have been Zeppla. Oh I, no, you're right. It is Zeppla. Um, but uh, 
Uh, an aside I do need to make about the word entitlement and entitled. As someone who purchased a product, you are indeed entitled to the product you were promised. And that's why when people got upset over, say, the Mass Effect 3 ending, they were perfectly reasonable to be upset over such a thing. Mm -hmm. When I am using the word entitlement, it is a shortcut for you must make this for me and no one else. And anyone who doesn't like that can fuck off. That is obviously beyond normal entitlement, but that's what I mean when I say they're being entitled bitches. Mm -hmm. And when, and uh, I've, and of course, of course, some of the more obnoxious were the were the were were the ones who were trying to pull some sort of emotional blackmail. Um, the whole oh you you just want you just want WoW to die or why are you why are you taking food off of their table? Um, pro tip: don't do that. Especially don't do that around me, a guy who does not give a fuck. My response will be to look at you and give you the Chad face and say, yes. <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll then rage at me and I will soak in the salt. Mm -hmm. uh, bathe and bask in its glory. Because salt it's mining is a way of life. <laughs> And when it com but I but within now obviously the lo the loss the lawsuit and all the things that came out of it when it comes to when it comes to the recent events with Activision Blizzard certainly helped accelerate this exodus, but I would be hard pressed I would be hard pressed to exclusively blame it. I am f I am fully of the opinion that this was inevitable. It was just a matter of what w of what was going to set it off, and that has been the um, common thread with all three parts of the Exodus trilogy. These are build-ups. You could see them from a long way away, mm -hmm. and you could see you could actually pretty easily track the path from thing was good, got popular, and then the decline. And and that's the point that we're trying to make here: that this is all inevitability for these things because they didn't do anything to try and correct the mistakes. Yeah. Now, Zero, I would I would like I would like to pick your brain for a moment on a, on a few things. One, right? What do you what do you think was the pro, the proverbial canary in the coal mine in in hindsight regarding WoW's decline? Oh. Oh, my brain's not going to do me any favors right now. Well, that's 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 nice. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually drawing a blank, but um, honestly, it really was just the for me, at least from my perspective, it was literally the just the constant. You could just tell that each time they came out with an announcement for something, they're like, "We're going to be doing this content, and we're going to be adding this, and this is going to be happening." It was just kind of like, oh, nothing much. You're just giving us crumbs and then they would make the excuse later on that oh we're going to be adding more so you couldn't add this into the expansion and you're now going to make us pay more money for it like it was just it was just it, you could tell they were just grasping for money and anyone who could see it saw it and there like you said we were talking earlier just just a bunch of faithful people who just like no that's not a thing And, it was it, it was it was content really. If I just dumb it down, it was content. Yeah. Now, what what was the point that made you snap? Uh, it was the fact that uh, I just didn't have the time to to enjoy the game with what there was to enjoy before. Oh, hey, look, here's the next expansion, sixty bucks. Thanks, guys. I'm barely able to even pay for your fucking game as it is. Yeah, because the. Wow, as it is, is probably the most monet is probably the most monetized game anywhere, because it's oh, easily it is it, it is pay, it is pay to play, it is pay to expand, with my with micro with microtransactions. Oh, I yeah, was gonna the, say the the only thing more monetized is a ten cent game. Yeah, 
Oh yeah, and there's one. There's one other thing I for I forgot to I forgot to mention that pro that probably exhausted people as well, and that's dailies. What I already complained about this. Well, I got to get my daily complaining out of my system. <laughs> there were there were da daily qu there were daily quests, raids, um, da daily ev daily event daily events, recurring ones, basic that were that there were so many. Da there are so many dailies, and I'm perfectly fine with cert with certain with certain time gated events. I mean, there are plenty of other, plenty of other MMOs do plenty of other MMOs do it. I mean, Guild Wars just to use a different example. Guild Wars Two has has the has the world events that that cycle regularly. But and of course, uh, as as I have to say, daily and other timed events. Ding. <laughs> but the but. The the problem the problem with having so many dailies I think I <laughs> to the point that Asmund Gold had a whiteboard of all of all the of all the dailies that he that he was doing is that you end up reducing you end up reducing so much of the game into busy work that you have to do these things in order to get advancements and I think that was one of those things that got people fed up. Along I can with, agree with you on that. Yes. Yeah, and course when shadowlands came around you've got you've got the you got bad lore you've got all you've got all the technical things you have a severe lack of content for end game and you ha and you have the fact that the that there wasn't that and this is something this is something that i began to notice more and more especially over the last couple of expansions an emphasis on systems in lieu of actual content You know, what, whether it be whether it be Azerite, whether it be Runes of Domination, whether it be Covenants, whether whether it be ar whether it be artif whether it be artifacts, a bunch it of, was um a bunch of subsystems that don't that don't um, that amount to very little. A bunch of subsystems introduced wholly wholly separate from the main system that don't really feed back into it, and are wholly irrelevant when the new subs sus subsystem comes along. We've briefly touched upon that subject before in previous Geek Watches and other other podcasts we've done, uh, and we've actually once referenced uh, Joshua Strife Hayes and his video about parasitic gameplay versus symbiotic gameplay, and this is a perfect example of parasitic gameplay. Mm -hmm. And I, I do think I do think for the purposes of. I do think for the purposes of the audience you should explain what is meant by parasitic gameplay. So, as I said there on that small little diatribe, this is a set of systems, subsystems that are introduced to the game that have no way to uh, give a feedback loop into the main system except in the most superficial way. And in doing so, when the next subsystem is introduced in the next content patch expansion whatever it might be that old subsystem is irrelevant and goes by the wayside um as such you've basically wasted time developing that subsystem on your on your character uh and it's a way to try and fill a content drought but it's like a stopgap almost it's not really efficient uh, and there are some systems that some people may say, well, you know, FF14 has those too. And I know that the first one I always see when I hear the, 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 the uh, discussion behind parasitic systems in FF14 is relic weapons. And I go, well, no, relic weapons are not required. They're a tiny bit of side content, and they feed directly back into the gameplay loop synergistically. <laughs> Um, and in fact, you can carry them from expansion to expansion so that they're always relevant. Mm -hmm. And the, that is a more symbiotic piece of gameplay. Uh, but a parasitic piece of gameplay is just one that it, you, when it is done, when it is no longer relevant, or when you have finished it, when it is relevant, it doesn't feel significant because it doesn't feed back into your core experience in any way. Mm-hmm. And throughout all, throughout all of this, pe people people start people ended up getting f ended up getting fed up and and le and leaving. And there had there had already been there had already been a 
a ble a bleeding of subscribers, which I which I remember I remember saying at one point there that no WoW killer is go is going to actually survive. If anything's gonna kill WoW, it's going to be itself. So far, I've been right, but um, <laughs> but I I had said I had said this before a Realm Reborn was even announced. So I I had no way of knowing and looking at looking at how it is how it is now where they're where they're lucky if they, where they're coasting along with what two million I don't know I'd have to be flutter to uh to go and find out yeah and they after a while after a while they had they had said that they would no long that they would no longer be displaying sub numbers because there are bet because there are um more because there are better ways to tr to track progress. <laughs> Which Mad Season had a field day with saying, "Yeah, the De the Detroit Li the Detroit Lions are, are the Detroit Lions don't need to, don't need to measure how many win how many wins and losses to determine success." Okay, I uh, I decide I decided to um to be flutter for a second. Um, it looks like as of now. Um, active players is around six point six million. Which, consider, considering considering that it, that it was close to that it was that it was hovering around twenty million just a few years ago, um, that's that that is a massive drop from where it was. Yeah, that's that's a big <laughs> thing. I didn't even realize it was that big. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, uh, but the the. And I don't, and I don't want, I don't want, I don't want all those people to suddenly not, to suddenly not have their game. But the fact, the fact that I kept seeing um, video after video of people, of people saying, "I'm done, I'm moving on to something else," I, th I find that, I find that very, very, very alarming. I won't say worrisome because I'm not worrying over it. I'm not losing, I'm not losing sleep over, 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 wow. Over, um, not he not heeding the ad not heeding advice from years ago. I am. Um, I have to correct myself because apparently this site is extremely, because um, this is mmopopulation.com and apparently I don't know how to read its graphs right. Um, you're right at about uh, two point one million is current active players. Uh, total subscribers about one hundred fifteen million. But the most damning thing of all. Uh, an activity score of two, which is less than the activity score for World of War uh, of World of Warcraft Classic at four. Hmm. Hmm. Which is probably why they're trying to do a TBC Classic, which they already screwed the pooch on by putting MTX in it and a level boost. <laughs> it's a level boost that's one character per account, but it's still a level boost. Mm -hmm. uh, I am very happy about seeing on the uh, uh, number one is um well Final Fantasy fourteen. With an activity score of 10, 28 million subscribers, and 2.6 million active players. Yeah. Which is a much bigger... <laughs> like, but those are the same numbers. Yeah, compare that to total subscribers. If we were to extrapolate that out so that the total number of subscribers and the total number of players were comparative at the same ratio, that's five times as many for Final Fantasy. This Shit. Is, this is why looking at just the just one column of numbers or two columns of numbers without context is a is bad is a bad move. Or what, yes. why um statistics is the third lie from Winston Churchill. <laughs> <laughs> lies, damned lies and statistics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now zero zero spo now, when it comes to, when it comes to the when it comes to the transfer between at between Azeroth and Hydaelyn, I will I will admit that I ha I will admit that I have a bit of a unorthodox position because unless 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 you did it as well, Zan, I'm pretty sure I was the on, I'm the only person in here who played Legacy 14. I played Legacy 14 on a friend's account. I never got to play it and own an account myself. But yes, I do in fact remember Legacy 14. Yeah. Um Legacy 14 is it, I've I've always I've always descri I've always described it as a poor man's 11. 11 was able to get away with the with the issues that it has because of because of the time that it came out. It was 11 has more in common with EverQuest than it does with WoW. 
Yeah, especially since it has 68 hour powers. Because because that was that was the design. A game a game like Eleven, and a, was was made was made when there was that whole when there was a very sandbox centric design, and is and especially I would argue was made was made more for internet cafes than than anything else. I can agree with that. Um, I never got to play FF Eleven at its height, but I have played it. Good game. I will not lie. Very good game. Mm-hmm. Um, it is from a mindset of when real time and the time inside your MMO should match, for one. And so powers that take two hours to recharge take two real time hours <laughs> to recharge. Um, and, but, you know, they were also extremely powerful. Uh, different different things were super powerful. Mm-hmm. Although Benediction was, what, a six hour power? Yeah. <laughs> Imagine if you could only use benediction once every six hours, healers. Uh, the, the, pro- the problem, the reason, one of there are many reasons why Legacy fourteen failed, but I'd say I'd say one of the bigger ones was trying was trying to apply the mindset of eleven in a in a po- in a post WoW environment. That is a big one from design ethos. Mm-hmm. Um, if we wanted to nitpick details, uh, combat was boring. Yes. Uh, the maps were terrible. They were way too big. Uh, they were way too big, and the way you read them was crap. Um, on top of all of that, you had, at least initially, the whole... By the way, if you play a class too long, you can't earn XP on it until next week! Yep. Yeah. <sighs> I never had I I when I had played I didn't have that problem so maybe they patched that out by the time I by the time I tackled it. But they played w- at one point oh monk. Mm-hmm. And yes, they did eventually patch that out and had a public announcement, a full PR press conference, where they publicly apologized for that. Yeah. Oh, um, but there was there was also there, I've seen. I've talked about this er- earlier on um, when I was when I was on Shades' live stream, but there was all there were a couple of things there were a couple of things to note. One, as was pointed out in the documentary, so ma- so many of the staff had no experience with MMOs; they had more experience with the single player games. Yep. Which, when Yoshi P got on, he was completely shocked at that. Yep. <sighs> or in in a. What the fuck are you guys doing? Kind of way, which is saying something from him. Who, Yoshi P was um, what was somebody who was not it was not in the Square Enix inner circle. In, mm-hmm. If for if you follow me, before before he had before he had stepped on, he was he was responsible for he was responsible for the for handling the Japanese version of Ultima Online. Not yeah, not, over, not overseeing it, but ju- but just ha- but just having a hand in that. That's I think both that and the Japanese version of I think it was Dark Age of Camelot were part of his experience. Yeah, and prior to his work on uh, on FF14, a lot of what he did uh, was Dragon Quest related mm-hmm. because he was from the Enix side of things. Yeah, and the thing. The the result there, but when it comes to the emphasis on graphics, this requires a bit of context because it's easy to say, "Oh yeah, they focus too much on graphics." I mean, it's Square. No, it was fo- it was focusing on gr- it was focusing on uh, uh, fo- too much of the too much resource on the wrong things, like having like having it where a potted plant would have as many polygons as a player character. That's something that you could re- you could possibly get away with in a single player game. You can't get away with that in a, in a multiplayer game. You can't even get away with that in a single player game, Monk. I can think of a very uh, very poignant example of uh, of where this sort of polygon count mix up has occurred and caused the game to crash and burn. <laughs> well, partially. Uh, Yandere Simulator, was, where a toothbrush easy. has yeah. nearly three thousand polygons, and a human character only has like three hundred. Yeah. By the way, 
Uh, side note, Yandere Simulator did release as 1.0 and did so uh, just a little while ago. So that that's a, that was a, a fucking trip. But now he's going to rebuild it from the ground up. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bones' wild ride never ends. Please let me jump off to my death. <laughs> No, no, you don't take fall damage because you're still because you're still playing, you're still playing the unholy combination of Zen from Half Life and the Chasm from Doom Two. <laughs> Why must you do this, Monk? Because God has cursed me for my hubris, and my work is never finished. <laughs> there will be a reckoning. I know. <laughs> but when and obviously when obviously um when things came to a head that that was when the announcement was we're put we're putting this thing up for fr we're putting this thing up for free we're going to be nuking it eventually but um but we but we need to, we need to do the hard reset and obviously we know how that came out we everybody's seen the an the answers trailer um i was i was watching meteor co meteor come da come down in real time which was a very surreal experience that it was that i don't think i think the only thing that came close to replicating that was and this might be a little bit on the nose uh, majora's mask yeah but even then i say that um so for anybody who was there at the shutdown of the servers for legacy you all remember that point where everybody was counting down and you'd get the errors that you couldn't connect to the server anymore, that it was having stability issues, which was actually planned status messages, I might add. Those weren't, there was no really connection issue with everybody's connections because everybody was getting the same message. Mm -hmm. And then the clock hits zero and the full answers animation, the full, the full CGI, this full motion video, except, you know, it's it's a CG animation, so it's way bigger than the FMVs of day of the days of yore, mm -hmm. of the the fall of Dalamud, the release of Bahamut, the destruction of Eorzea, uh, mm -hmm. Louis Swa saving every adventurer he could by teleporting them five years into the fucking future, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, and all of that played out. You you got this almost fatalist air. Not even nihilist. It was fatalist. I think today you'd call it doom pilled or black pilled. <laughs> I fucking hate that term. But in this case, it is relevant. <laughs> you were standing there with tons of players who are either standing there or some were, you know, facetiously dancing jigs. Some were setting off fireworks. Others were doing different emotes. There were paladins handing out random blessings. Because you, you could use emote slash bless. Um, there were people casting random buffs. And something it reminded me of. that That is reflected in real life. Is the way the human mind suddenly switches and changes. In the face of insurmountable doom. You see a giant tsunami tidal wave coming your way while you're on a beach. No way you can get away and up to where the water break is. And every one of you and the beachgoers can see it. And you know that water is coming way faster than you think it is. Hmm. There are some people who are just going to freeze. They're going to they're gonna go zero emo. There are some people who are going to break down laughing, crying. Some people are going to run around screaming, Oh my god, we're all going to die. And this was the same atmosphere and for anyone who hasn't actually seen that even if you weren't there when it happened for anyone who hasn't actually seen that there are a few good videos on youtube where you can find it mm -hmm. and you can, you can link me when i i never saw that so if you wouldn't mind linking me in the future that'd be great i'll definitely give you one that. later zero but it's a you can watch like you watch their chats and you'll see them talking their link shells and stuff and it's just like some people are like, it's been an honor to serve with you, brothers. And, uh, and you know, everybody's role-playing or not role-playing as they want. They're doing random shit that they want to do. But everybody's standing together in groups. Because I think the thing everybody was scared of was being alone for this. Like, it was, 
it was almost like if you were alone, did it only happen to you? Mm-hmm. So it was it was a f- fucking mind trip. Likely not something I should have experienced that particular year, but still, it was a fucking mind trip. Mm-hmm. Now, one thing one thing that I'd like one thing that since I've gone since I've gone into that. One thing that I'd li- that I'd like to dive into is how is how everybody got reintroduced to a realm reborn, and I and I'd like to start with you, spoiler. Okay. Like how did you get peer pressured into into trying out FF fourteen, um, or or was the route a bit different? I don't even know if it's technically peer pressured. Um, so I have this best friend, um, who, whose mom, like, as my friend was growing up, she played World of Warcraft and kind of casually played Final Fantasy XIV, and so she was always into, into both of them, um, really got into the story around Heaven's Ward, Stormblood. Um, and then really fell into the story during Shadowbringers. So we have this thing that we do where we tell each other about the fandoms that we recently got into. So she was telling me about about 14, and I was like, wow, that's really cool. And then I started seeing artists uh, start doing art for, for the characters for, from, from 14, and I was like, wow, that's a really cool character. I don't currently have a computer for this, but I can see if I can get the specs for it, and then maybe try out the game. So I started the game like a couple months before the the absolute surge, like the the peak surge, where um, I think I'd been playing for a couple months when they updated the free trial. So updated I was... the free trial and um r- and managed to run out of ki- managed to run out of keys to sell. Which how the fuck yeah. did you do that? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was, like, that's absolutely crazy. Like, I don't... It's because the database that was automatically generating keys was was fully taxed. It wasn't that they were out of copies, it was just yeah. that the server was taxed. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so so you, you got it involved right just before we got the uh, famous meme of, have you tried the free trial of Final Fantasy XIV? Now, uh, all, the, all the way up to, uh, now free all the way up to level 60, including the... A critically acclaimed expansion, Heaven's Word. Yes. So oh. I so I was playing when you the free trial ended in Camp Drybone. I was there for about a week before they updated it with five point three. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Um, zero, zero. What about you? What What was your origin story in this case? You still there, buddy? Oh, sorry. I didn't realize I muted my microphone by accident. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so I, after falling out for a weird while for a couple of years, I, I pretty much just like MMO hopped, trying to find the MMO that I liked. And by the time, I had always kept tabs with Final Fantasy XIV, but never had anything to play it until they finally dropped the PlayStation 4 version and you know the free trial was out so that's what got me into it was pretty much just yeah mmo hopping mm-hmm. it was also looking for something to play with my wife at the time too because we were both trying to find you know the next wow for us i can sit i suppose it's a blessing in disguise that you ended up going with this instead of say new world <laughs> uh yeah i no i wasn't that interested in new world it looks nice but no thank you you so uh, I've been something. keeping up with it, yeah. I will say I I will say you dodged the bullet. <laughs> As for me, Monk, um, like I did play Legacy, but I didn't actually get into A Realm Reborn until 2015. Um, due to some personal issues, I didn't really have the ability to get into it when it first launched. As a uh, everybody here, I think knows about. Um, and then in 2015, uh, one of my now no longer friends, uh, 
said that he wanted me to play FF14 with him because he'd gotten into it. And I remembered the few times I had played one, uh, had played Legacy, and I was like, did they really improve that? <laughs> like, I was very, very skeptical because I hadn't been keeping up with Final Fantasy XIV. Um, and he's like, okay, so here's the thing there, there's a two week free trial. So, for all of you who have this wonderful up to fucking level 60 and the end of Heaven's Word free trial, suck my dick. I had two weeks up to level 30. You didn't even get your, you, you got your job crystal, and that was fucking it. Um, <laughs> and uh, he's like, just try the two the two week trial. If you like it, I will buy you the game and pay for your sub. I was like, okay, let's do this. I try the free trial. I tell him literally two days later. Okay, so buy it for me. Because <laughs> I was I was in. I was fucking in. I started as a cat girl who punches things, and I ended the, the trial as a cat girl who cuts things from the shadows. All right. And then boosted my way all the way to Heaven's Word as a ninja, hit 60, switched to Dragoon so I could find out what this whole tanking the floor thing meant. Um, found out that I'm bad at tanking the floor. Uh, and then finally, because I had to, because giant swords fucking rock... Dark Knight. Yep. Oh. Unfortunately, I couldn't stay in. Mm -hmm. um, 2016, I had to stop playing because of the fact that I had a day job and uh, my friend no longer wanted to play. And so, you know, it was a choice of, do I really pay $15 a week to play with a dwindling uh, friend pool who's no longer playing? And... Because I was in between content pa patches, 3.35 had had fit. I'd finished everything in 3.35, and now it was on the the drip for 3.4. Um, I felt like I was working two jobs because all I could do at that point was dailies and the repeatable content. And this is still back in the time when uh, Square Enix was kind of ironing those out because Heavensward was the first expansion. They were still ironing out that gameplay loop, how to make it feel better. I don't hold that against them at all. This is growing pains. Mm -hmm. But at that time, I was just like, I can't do it anymore. And so I dropped it. And I haven't gone back because um, A, I'm fucking stubborn, um, as all of you well know. <laughs> and B, uh, I just do not have the time between all the other fun video games I have to play. Woe is me. It's such torture having over a thousand games to choose from to play. Oh no. Whatever will I do? Play Super Robot Wars 30. It's fucking epic. I knew that was fucking coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never not going to plug the game, Monk. Never. <laughs> Everybody should buy it so that so that they know that we want it in the fucking West and it keeps continues to come to North American markets. That's my yeah, my it, shameless I'm fucking plug for this game. My also, shameless fucking plug. But you can't shame what doesn't have any shame. So also, also it's another way for you to let Gigak eat shit. <laughs> Gigak, um, your wife, your you don't deserve your wife. I'm just gonna say that. <laughs> but. Now, for me, per for me personally, it was a case of one once once Legacy ended and ARR started, I jumped back in. I only I only I only stopped because because of um, personal issues and a and some and some situations I was de I was dealing with. Um, yep. But that but that doesn't mean I that doesn't mean I regret it. And um, you know how, and the the funny thing is is that. Um, now I did. I didn't have. I didn't have a whole lot. I didn't have a whole lot of support because, um, I was. I most. I was mostly run. I was mostly running things solo. I would. I was jump. I was jumping from free company to free company, but mm -hmm. even even back then, once you were at a once you were at a at a high enough level where you could join a free company, I was getting invites left and right. Um. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Um. Uh, but. And of, and of course, it probably wouldn't surprise any of you if I if I say that my fir that my first character was a monk. 
Of course. I mean, I, I went punchy, punchy cat girl, like I said. So, um, I went punch, I went punchy giant guy. Rogadin or, or Highlander here? Um, Rogadin. Of course, it was Rogadin. <laughs> you, you, when he says punchy giant guy, you at least know it wasn't Elizin. Monk hates elves. Yeah. As <laughs> as the as the gimmick, I. I t if I want to be technical, I don't hate I don't I don't hate elves, but I do but I do, or rather, I don't hate elves. I hate elves. There is a difference. <laughs> so if we want to make this difference in Final Fantasy XIV terms, he likes Sunshine Best Boy. <laughs> a smile better suits a hero. Mm -hmm. But he would he would hate just about. Any of Thornton's troop on Monk. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah, everyone yeah. loves Horshafont, and if you don't love Horshafont, you have no heart. Oh, I like horse. I like Horshafont. Um, yeah, but we I already established you have no heart. I do. It's just really, really small. Give him the grinch run for his money. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. In, I do that every year because every year I'm disappointed that I don't get coal. <laughs> and according to some people, it's because they think I'm gonna do some. I'm gonna do something with alchemy with it. <laughs> oh, but I mean, what the feds don't know won't hurt them. <laughs> but when it comes to, but when it comes to. When it came to the when it came to the experience, I st there was still plenty of stuff I enjoyed, and um, there were there was one of the free companies I was in was very was very forgiving of me when I was trying to level up um, white mage so that I could unlock monk because this was around that time when they nowadays they're a whole lot more forgiving about um, about the prerequisites to get your job crystal back then mm -hmm. not so much. Yeah, level. Um, I had to have level thirty in in pugilist and level th and level thirty level fifteen in um, conjurer in conjurer. Yep. Fascinating. And mm. inc incidentally, the names for co the names conjurer and thamaturge al always always thro always throw me off because of because of what because when you look at the name and what and the implications that it has. Thaumaturgy is all about creating miracles, which you think would lead into White Mage. Yeah, but every every time you see thal Thaumaturgy in any sort of uh, fiction, it's always dark magic. Which is fucking weird. Since Thaumaturgy is the study of miracles. I mean, gr granted, granted, one can argue that magic and mi that magic and miracles are cut on are on the same cloth. Um, you might have if you're t if you're dealing with war if you're dealing with Warhammer, you might have a harder time making that making that claim. But still, or rather, you can make that claim. You just might end up getting yourself shot <laughs> and then set on <sighs> fire. And if you're lucky, in that order. But. When it comes, but when it comes to, but Conjurer is the bigger offender because when I think when I think of that, I don't think of White Mage. When I hear when I hear the name Conjurer, it's because he's black. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he thinks of it because he's gray. Fuck off. <laughs> Not only did I get the black joke in, I got the Lord of the Rings joke in! <sighs> but, when it comes, when it, but, since we, since we did that whole dinging thing about, about, th about things that WoW was doing that FF14 is, clearly, the, f the funny thing it, the funny thing is, um, Blizzard has had, Blizzard for the longest time had a reputation of taking ideas from other games and, and simplifying them or ma or making them more accessible 
WoW was a perfect example of this, since a lot of it, w a lot of it was born from, about from EverQuest, which yep. was not as user friendly. Speaking from experience, still not as user friendly. Even EQ two is not that user friendly. Mm -hmm. I would, I would <sighs> like to say what I would like to bring up EverQuest next for comparison, but it never happened. <laughs> this is where my EverQuest next would be if I had one. <laughs> In the in that same vein, if you if you really look at it, especially with all the dings you've mentioned tonight, FF14 is do is doing has has been doing exactly that with WoW, taking things that people don't like about WoW and simplifying them, or making them or, more accessible. Let's do some comparison, shall we? Let's get the biggest one out of the way: Cataclysm, and of course. Answers in the lead up into a realm reborn. Mm -hmm. Who did it better? We all know who did it better. Yeah. There's 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 no there's no judging here. Fuck you if you think WoW did it better. You're wrong, objectively so. Catacly cat with with Cataclysm, um, that involved that involved a dragon that only only the lore, only the only the neckbeardiest of Lord of Lorehounds would have known about. There so you and me. Yeah, and even that, even then, it was left field. As I, I do not recall a, I do not recall a single bit of build up for Deathwing before he shows up in Cataclysm. And if there, if what, there is one of those I, if there lore is, points that was in the books. Yeah, but the yeah, but I um, here, we we here, know how how that works. Yeah, that that's no that is no that is no excuse. He just comes he just comes right the fuck out of nowhere and wrecks shit. Contrast this with um, not just not just with the not just with the answers um, event, but everything that was leading up to it, Project Meteor especially, and the fa and the fact that and the, and the fact that um, Nail Von Darnus was so fucking insane that, <laughs> that his that his own that his, that his own colleague was like yeah yeah I'm yeah I'm helping you guys out taking him down because even he, because I want to I want to conquer Az Azeroth. Not a, not Azeroth. I don't want to conquer Eorzea. You can't conquer a wasteland. <laughs> I mean, if nobody's there, nobody else is there to claim it. You can, but that also means you have no subjects. And we're not doing this the House Steiner way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, the um, <laughs> Deathwing comes out of nowhere for Cataclysm. There's no real build up to it. Yeah, but I then... was going to say that like. I liked reading a lot of the lore for World of Warcraft and just Warcraft in general on the time, and he's only mentioned in certain things, and only just mentioned because he was a thing that happened. Mm -hmm. But yep. then all of a sudden, just hey guys, I'm back. But why? Yep. Whereas we have patches upon patches of all of these quests you are doing to stop <sighs> Nail Darnus. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm just cutting out the middle name because. The only nail with a middle name is the nail on turn nine. Nail Deus Darnus can suck every inch of my left nut. <clears throat> but, uh... Then, you know, the whole patch buildup, all the missions you're doing to try and prevent it from happening, and it still happens, but they don't make it feel like they took away player agency. It actually felt like odds that were slowly increasing to an insurmountable level that no matter how many people fought there just wasn't any stopping this so you had to mitigate and mitigate and mitigate and then you get the 11th hour solution in the ceiling of the 12 and you think it's gonna work you're watching the cuts and you're like yes yes science did it well i don't think they were the science at that time technically they were the circle of knowing i think yes they were Circle of knowing. And but you're like, yes! Louis Swan, everybody did it! And you see it all happening, you're like, go, go, go! And then Bahamut's just like, I'm too angry for this, fuck you. <laughs> and you're just like, oh no. And of course he then terra flares the shit out of the entire fucking continent. Mm -hmm. And and leaves and and you and this is this is where we get to one other one other thing. I talked earlier about about how um, 
World of Warcraft was trying was slowly shifting towards trying to do a chosen one narrative, with but not, but not being willing to go all, to go all in on it. Mm -hmm. Whereas with Eva fourteen, you have you have a you have a built in chosen one of you being the warrior of light. I'm glad Shadowbringers did something to even uh, alleviate that particular issue. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, <laughs> but but that but that's some um, that's a that's a bit ballparking. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll get to that later, <laughs> maybe. But and then and of of course then of course then we have um we have I then we have um the one of the one of the funny things is you you would think that I would have you would think that I would have an issue with the with the lack of individual variance within classes. However, I don't. And in fact, the, in fact, um I believe Yoshi P had had said that they had tooled around with the with the idea of of a of an A and B spec for each classes, but they but they stopped it because it would create more problems than solve it. Yeah. That that, that they were going to they were going to they were uh flirting with the idea of doing the the, the talent customization type systems. The different specifications, but uh, that the implementation was causing a lot of different other engine issues. So they were just like, mm, rather we'd give you a good game with a strong engine and good characters and classes. Mm -hmm. And that's what they did. And mm -hmm. I think the reason I, do, I think the reason I don't mind the la the lack of build variety, com comparatively speaking, is be is because everything is so laser focused. And even we. Hey. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Even within, even within the, even within that linear, that very linear setup, the way you can express yourself using the talents that you end up getting doesn't the allows it to not allows it to not feel as restrictive as it might appear. Could you elaborate on what you mean by laser focused? What I what I mean what I mean by that is is la is laser focused on building on building classes around certain roles, mm -hmm. and and not and while while there while there can be while there can be some um, side dipping, largely if if I'm if I'm playing a paladin, mm -hmm. I'm largely going I'm largely going to be playing tank. Maybe sometimes I can be D I can be a backup DPS, but. For the most part, I am playing tank, and I am pl and so I am going to be mess so I am going to be messing around with, with not a whole lot of mobile with limited amounts of mobility and managing enemy enmity, or aggro. <laughs> if I'm playing a if I'm playing a if I'm playing a bard, I'm going to be focused on range DPS, moving ar moving around, and and de and dealing with dealing with the attack and support abilities I have as a bard. <laughs> that's what I, that's what I mean by laser focus. Each class being purposely built for one specific role, and ninety percent of what it ninety percent of what they're going to be doing is built around that. Okay. On on top of that, um, the other part of the focus there that I think is another reason that the vari that the lack of variance doesn't feel bad. Every class has its own sub-storyline. Mm -hmm. The laser-focused nature of a class allows it to express as well as possible within that storyline. And um, every class is part of the, the traditional golden triangle of DPS, tank, and healer. Mm -hmm. It's it, it doesn't feel like anyone is excluded. Now, yes, looking at queue times, sometimes you feel very excluded. Hi, DPS queues, how are you? <clears throat> but that's due to the other part of why the lack of uh, variance within class doesn't feel um, limiting either. Because you can play all of the classes, you can toy around with each role and find which one you like best to play as much as you want. And 
even within each role, there are classes that have their own flair and, and little extras that maybe you just like to see big numbers. You're a healer who wants to heal, and you want to heal, and you just want to see the big numbers. You're going to be a white mage. Mm-hmm. Full stop. You are going to be a white mage. All the big healing numbers, all the fucking time. Mm-hmm. Or, or maybe you like a little bit of RNG. Maybe you like a little bit of a of randomness in, in what else you can do. You're going to play an Astrologian. Those okay. cards are fun. Trust in the heart of the cards. Yes, it's time to, for Grandpa to stop having a stroke. <clears throat> I've overplayed that joke. I'm not going to use it again. Um, the, uh, or within tanks, if you want to be that knight in shining armor, you are the paladin. You have your stances, you have your sword and shield, you stand before the darkness, and you destroy it, and you help your party destroy it. Alternatively, if you want to be the darkness, revel with it, and also wield a big fucking sword, because come on, guys, a big fucking sword, also you're going to be a dark hear, knight. Also hear voices in your head. No, Frey is my friend. You shut the fuck up. <laughs> he exists. He's real. I can even summon him into combat. <laughs> um, and of course, but you, you can't w- summon Blueberry Boy. And of course, if you want to, if you want to, um, one thing, one thing that now we we will we will end up ro- we will end up roasting all of the jo- all of the jobs later. But the but the the point is is that. Earlier, earlier on, I talked about how, th- how there was an issue with more and more classes being being multi-role in WoW, and that it, and that it wasn't giving anything to the single-role classes to compensate. It's for the, it's for this reason that I highlight that laser focus. Because there is no multi multi-role job. Mm-hmm. Every job has its role, and while there may be some cross roll actions you can get in order to help uh, get some useful tools mm-hmm. for your toolkit you're still going to be that DPS or that healer or that tank yes now when it comes to when it comes to the when it comes to the level boost question because I have seen people go well FF14 has has level has level boosting that particular type of level boosting only uh, only apply one. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure there isn't a pay a bunch of money in the cash shop to instantly jump to a certain level. Um, two, it only really applies if you have a starting character from a given expansion. Like if you start if you start out if you start if you if you decide to start your character as a dark knight. Mm-hmm. Um, and in that in that regard, it's in that regard, it's more of it's more of compensating for the fact that there isn't a, that there isn't a um, cl- there isn't a class equivalent for for a lo- for a lot of the classes that were introduced in the expansions. So, the the level boost item is called Tales of Adventure. Um, and the. What happens when you use a Tales of Adventure currently? Uh, the, designa- the designated job is instantly leveled to 70. All job quests up to level 70 will be completed. All actions granted through job quests will up to level 70 automatically. The Soul Crystal will uh, be equipped automatically upon logging back in. An item level 400 augmented Skaven weapon and set of augmented Skaven gear, excluding accessories, will be equipped automatically upon logging back in. A coffer containing a set of accessories, 50 elegant platinum pieces that can be sold to vendor shops for 500,000 gil will all be included in the game. Note that this says nothing about skipping the actual story of the game. Now, there's also a requirement. You can't be on a free trial. You have to be on a paid version of the game. And you have to be paying for a version of the game in which the job exists. So the base classes can all be... uh, You can use it for any of them if you have a product key for A Realm Reborn. 
uh, Dark Knight Machinist and Astrologian all require Heaven's Word, and uh, Samurai and Red Mage all require Stormblood. And when you use it, it, it levels the class. And it doesn't boost you past the actual gameplay. That's just for the level boost. Mm -hmm. right. There is um, the there's the story skip option, right? Like you yeah, can the, buy the Tales of Adventure, A Realm Reborn, Heaven's Word, and Stormblood. Um, they are optional items that will flag the corresponding title as completed and take you to the start of the subsequent storyline. But the item will not raise your character's level, and you still have to have the actual product key for the designated expansion and a character of sufficient level to accept the next main scenario quest. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to skip to straight to the end of Stormblood and start Shadowbringer, and you wanted to do so brand new, you don't have an account, you're just buying your account your first time, You'd have to purchase at least one of these items and the uh, the the skip for all the way to store to to uh, Shadowbringers, and there's requirements and uh, th there are benefits, but there are also requirements to each. For example, again, using the one for Stormblood, which skips all the way to the very beginning of Shadowbringers, mm -hmm. uh, the benefits. All main scenario quests within A Realm Reborn, Heavensward, and Stormblood will be completed automatically. Your character will have already automatically accepted the Circus Trench, the first main scenario quest of Shadowbringers, but you have to have a Disciple of War or Magic, so melee versus magic, or, well, physical versus magic, I should say, mm -hmm. um, at level 70, and a registered product key for Shadowbringers. Um... In, if you haven't yet joined a grand company, you'll automatically be enlisted in a grand company from your starting city. Um, you'll gain access to most of the dungeons and trials associated with a Realm Reborn, Heavensward, and Stormblood, because a lot of those dungeons and trials are done as part of main, uh, main uh, scenario. However, things like extreme trials and extreme dungeons and uh, savage content, all that stuff, that's side content. And so there are a lot of roulettes that won't open. Um, anyone who doesn't have a chocobo will be given one automatically and unlock the ability to ride other mounts. All mounts associated with the main scenario of the, of the three previous expansions, flying mounts in the Realm Reborn areas, and ether currents for flying mounts in Heaven's Word and Stormblood. Um, all etherites available... P wow, that's actually a pretty good one. All etherites available to, prior to Shadowbringers. So for those who don't know, etherites are how you teleport around the map. Having every etherite is actually kind of a useful one, but I still wouldn't pay the, the skip for this. Yeah, most of the people that I know have paid for the skip have already played through the game once, and they, they're leveling an alt. I think and, that's what this was specifically designed for, to make alts yeah. easier. Yes, yeah. both of these were made for ma to make alts easier. This, Or for returning players to catch up if they really want to skip everything and just play what's now. Like, <laughs> this would be perfect for someone like me who stopped in the middle of Heavensward. I could pay for Endwalker and have access all the way through to the end of Shadowbringers. Um, and then I could pay for the skip to the end of Stormblood and a, and a level 70 token for my Dark Knight and go from there. Me, personally, I would never fucking do this. Ever! Anyone who knows me knows I love story and knows I love side quests and knows I'm a fucking completionist when it comes to certain things. Mm-hmm. So, uh, this is anathema to someone like me, and it's probably anathema to a lot of different people who want who are still going through the character on their main. I, ca I can't see this being used for new people, ever. Or almost ever. Yeah, and uh, I, I, know I specifically bring up the new people because that's the argument that's often been made about the, about the level boost, which, as an aside, the level boost in WoW is $60. Just... Oof. Uh. Let me let me actually see where's the price on this one purchase twenty five for uh, for Tale of Adventure Stormblood so the one that skips you is twenty five and for the actual level boost if I go to that and say I purchased 
tank Dark Knight. Kind of twenty five as well. So trying to think of a single thing on the Mog Station that's more than like thirty. Thirty is usually the highest that I see on the Mog Station. Yeah. <laughs> and so these skips are a separated. So if you're already at the end of the game and you want to get a a, a uh, you don't want to take the time to level a new class, but you want it. You're just like, I want to try out this class in current content. You can just pay 25 to level a class up to the current content and then run it through some stuff and say, oh, I kind of like this at this level. Or you can go, mm, not really for me. And you're only down 25 bucks, which to some people is a lot. I will acknowledge $25 can be a huge amount. Just a $15 subscription can be a huge amount for some people. Mm-hmm. But this is A, entirely optional. This is something that you don't, like, if you go to the actual FF14 main page, na.finalfantasy14.com, there's big buttons for start your free trial, or buy now, or head to the official community website, the Lodestone. And if you scroll down, over 22 million players, awards and nominations button, eight races and a multitude of customization options, which shows a bunch of pictures of different people with their custom uh, swag, because goddamn, is this game so fucking good at customization, but we'll get into that. Mm -hmm. You scroll down this main page where it's talking about, you know, what is Final Fantasy XIV, and uh, it tries to tell you all the cool little shit you can do. Um, You know, gives you some, some cool stuff about you know, what happens in each of these stories? Or, you know, what can you do in combat with your classes and jobs and limit breaks and go fight dungeons and primals? Or stuff outside of combat, like free companies, housing, fashion, the gold saucer. <clears throat> we love Hildebrand in this house, and if you do not like Hildebrand, I will kick you in the fucking teeth. <clears throat> <laughs> Gives you another start free trial buy now button. It has promotional pages for each of the current expansions. Nowhere on this main page is there a button to find. Not at least if there is, it's not obvious. It's not a part of what they want to give you. What they want to try and have you do is go on a fucking adventure. They want you to go have fun. They're not trying to sell you this fucking oh, pay for a level skip to catch up to what's new. They'll. I mean, there, there's this there's this section here that says, live your story, become the warrior of light, and fight to deliver the realm from certain destruction. The first thing it shows is scenes from A Realm Reborn. There's a little arrow, very, in, in, you know, inconspicuous off to the right-hand side. If I click that, it starts showing me stuff from Heaven's Word. If I click it again, now it's showing me stuff from Stormblood. And then if I click it again, it's showing me stuff from Shadowbringers. But it's all geared to try and draw you in and start you on the adventure rather than make you pay to get to the end of the adventure Mm -hmm. because yoshi p the development team the entirety of i believe this is square enix business uh business group three Mm -hmm. these guys at this point know that what they have fashioned is beloved and people enjoy the experience and so they are going to do everything in their power to convince you hey, this experience is really fucking worth it. Do it. You just click start free trial. If nothing else, click start free trial. The free trial. That's a, it's, it's as big as the buy now button. They aren't two different sizes. They are the same size. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is Square. This is Yoshi P. This is everyone who is involved with FF14 going, buy the game. And if you like it, you can buy it. Just mm-hmm. just please enjoy yourself. Now So this this level skip stuff is an afterthought, an aside, something that nobody will see unless they go looking. I literally had to search it in DuckDuckGo to actually find it. Yeah. Now the this also brings me to some, to something else I, I wanted to cover. Since the since new players is often used as an excuse for the level boost, that's where something like the mentor system i think is paramount. <laughs> oh the mentor system Since you start out as a sprout somebody can mentor you and both of you benefit mentors also get the mentor roulette which mm-hmm. they just go around helping newbies in new dungeons and stuff mm-hmm. which me- which means which means that 
that the experienced people have a, have a reason to help have help out the rookies, and the rookies get the get uh, get a more positive thing because they're probably not having somebody yelling at them because they because they screwed up one tiny thing. Not only that, um... I do find that. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say uh, that the benefits of, of the mentor roulettes are not just limited to you know helping people out and getting a good good community experience. There are tangible benefits too, whether it's in the in the forms of uh, of some of the in game currencies that are used to buy end end game stuff. Or amount for I think there, isn't there amount for doing something like three thousand mentor roulettes? I uh, nev I've never done that many, so I can't say. I haven't been playing long enough to get mentor status, so <laughs> I'll be flutter here for another second. <laughs> yeah, spo spoiler zero flutter who is currently not here. Is is our relevant is our resident lookup boy? Mm -hmm. He it. does wiki stuff a lot. I even call it. I even called him Flutter Philip as a as a nod to Philip from Common Rider Double. <laughs> so to even be a mentor, what you have to do is you have to get achievements in the game. Mm -hmm. Dungeon master completing a, a thousand instanced dungeons, raids, or trials. You have to get fifteen hundred player commendations. So people have to, at the end of a dungeon or instance or trial, there's a pick the person you think did the best job. A lot of people get their 1,500 player commendations playing tanks, I might add, because a lot of low-level players just like to com commend tanks for being a good tank. Oh. Um, really? That's interesting. I found it to be more the healers. Um, that might It might have changed since I played. I know that I was getting tons of... I would get three commendations on every light party uh, dungeon I went through as a tank. I will say I'm one who always does it to tanks. I think it's, I think it's just biased. easy to get commendations, period. Yeah. Not to mention the fact that you have to do... You have to get the achievements Speaker for the Righteous, Speaker for the Honorable, Speaker for the Brave, and Speaker for the Wise, which require you to, to complete Tank Roll Quest to Have Loved and Lost, which is a, uh, a quest you can only get at level 80... Um, and so, you know, the Soul of Temperance, which is Speaker of the Honorable, which is the healer role quest, again, level 80, Courage Born of Fear and a Tearful Reunion are physical and magical DPS. You have to basically get to the, the level 80 of every role, of at least one job in every role, mm -hmm. to do these role quests. You have to have those. And so this is just for battle mentors. There's also mentors for trade, which is Disciples of Hand and Land, that's crafting and gathering. Mm-hmm. You have to achieve level 80 on every f fucking, uh, on, on, well, no, it's, it says one of, of each. So one I, um, land and one of hand. Yeah, one one miner or botanist or fisher, or and then one carpenter, blacksmith, armor, or goldsmith, leatherworker, weaver, alchemist, or culinarian. And then you also have to gather or catch 300 collectibles from gathering, and synthesize 100 collectibles from crafting, which collectibles are commonly used to get script anyway. So, I mean, I probably already have 300 collectibles on my Fisher alone. Mm. <clears throat> That's all the way back in Heaven's Word. Ha ha! Yeah. And then there's also, you register with a Smith NPC in one of the cities, mm -hmm. or in one of the areas, I should say, technically. Um... And you get the online status for Menser, um, so that when players search the player search interface, which, by the way, is a fantastic uh, search interface used to find a lot of different stuff, but they can just look up Mentors. Um, and then whether you're in Mentor online status or not, you always have access to the Novice Network, which um, allows you to you know, talk to novices as anyone who's a sprout mm -hmm. and um battle, battle mentors are always eligible to add to register for duty roulette mentor um mem mentors always receive ex the experience point bonus from grouping with uh new advent adventurers um, mentor statuses are now separated into four categories of 
mentor, PVE mentor, trade mentor, and PVP mentor. Mm -hmm. Um, there's also a novice, a, a novice. Oh, I didn't know this about the novice network. There's another novice status called returner. Players who have not played the game in 45 days or more and have at least one job, job or class at level 50 or above. So if I came back to the game, I'd be a returner. Which you put a cute little um, bloomed flower on your yeah. Name. Which which I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm just gonna side plug here for the best single player Final Fantasy. Um, oh God, here we go. Returners are the name of the rebel group in Final Fantasy VI. I see what you're doing. You also did a lot of Final Fantasy VI references in Heaven's Word with the Warring Triad series of quests. <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you ever so much. Um, but now, when it comes when it comes to the when it comes to the, obviously the dude, obviously one can make a point of comparison between um, between LFG and LFR and the Duty Finder. And I'd say, I'd say I'd say the I'd say the reason why why the, why the Looking for series feature in in wow, in wow doesn't wow has has issues that the duty finder doesn't comes into twofold. One is the fact that it, that the looking fors are a glorified waiting list, with where you where you it's basically the equivalent of, pu of putting an of putting an ad on a bulletin board in a coffee shop, and hoping and hoping somebody looks, whereas something like the duty finder actively tries to construct. Um, party members for instances. So it's m more like the party finder in fourteen. That's what because there's what the I'm duty gonna... finder. Yeah. yeah, that's what Sorry. I'm referring to. Yeah. So the party, the party finder, and the duty finder, as well as the duty roulette, are much more customizable. And are actually while they do put you on it, like with the roulettes, you are put on a waiting list. Mm -hmm. Um. Because you're waiting to join one of the groups that's currently building for any instanced dungeon or trial or, or duty. Um, uh, the party finder and the duty finder both uh, are more a way for you to advertise that you are looking for specific... Uh, duties to join like you can you can actually technically uh, with the duty finder you can actually queue up for multiple duties and it'll start queuing you into whichever one seems to be the one that's going to be um, going to come up first and the other the I'd say so, I'd say the the other thing that the other thing to note when it com when it comes to this sort of thing is the fa the fact that it the fact that it like I said it is that when the time comes it's actively set is actively setting the thing up rather than put rather than just putting your name out there and expecting someone else to do all the work. Um, yeah, the the one the the looking for group and looking for uh, looking for raid stuff in. In WoW is much more like the Party Finder, as as uh, Spoiler was saying. Yeah, because the Party Finder, you put up the place that you want to go, along with the roles you're willing to accept, uh, whether there's an average item level or not, you know, etc. Mm -hmm. Um, you can even if you don't want to go with a, a normal role structure of like two tanks, like if you're going full party, two tanks, uh, two healers, four DPS. Uh, you can change it so you only have, you know, one tank, two healers, five DPS, or even one tank, one healer, six DPS, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but it's much more customizable. And it goes through your data center, or I, I think even the party finder even has some cross-world stuff, doesn't it? I, I believe so. Yeah. And when it comes... Obviously, when it, obviously when it comes, to, we already mentioned the we already mentioned the story thing, but I also want to highlight the sto the um, storytelling in the in the sense that while WoW WoW has 
more than its fair share of major recurring characters throughout its expansions. They, end, they, they always end up passively interacting with you, or in more recent cases, they refer to you by some, t by some title that you, have no, that you have no connection with. Like in, Sha in, in Shadowlands, they call you Maw Walker because you're, because you're exploring the Maw. But, in the but it but it ends up feeling odd when say J when say Jaina keeps keeps calling you that even though you've met Jaina several times by that point. <laughs> whereas, um, instead, whereas it, even though even though you have that chosen one thing with the whole Warrior of Light, for the most part, um, the primary representation of that is going to be your interaction with the Scions, the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. And the and within that you're not the leader of the you're not the leader of the, of that group. You just happen to be a member of it. In fact, you're the, in fact for all intents and purposes, you're the Greenhorn. The Greenhorn who just so happens to repeatedly save the world and the Scions have decided to rally around you. <laughs> yeah, but you're it's a it's a case of being you're certainly an important pe you're certainly an important piece but you're not run you're not running the show in that in as far as the, as far as that group and there's uh, and of course there's other groups that you asso that you associate with some of them more annoying than others and I and mm -hmm. the whole but the but the fact of the matter is it's to it's told in a way where where you're treat where you're not treated as just a passerby that it that is what I'm trying to get at when it comes to the story and the storytelling. Obviously, Wow ha Wow has a Wow has a great story within it. Well, it did, but I'm but that's not the point. But the story te but the but the storytelling was done in a way that was not built for that built for that um, singular special character until until they decided arbitrarily that it needed to be. But this, but the store, but not actually write it as such. That's. I'd that's like to. The key. That's. Go ahead. I'd like to point out that the other part of Final Fantasy XIV making the player character, um, not just a random passerby, is, uh, character consistency and persistence. My favorite little detail that I saw when I was playing ARR and Heavensward was uh, after I uh, after I got my my Dragoon to 60 mm -hmm. uh, when you start getting more uh, more directly involved with the Dragon Song War um, Estinian who is the mentor for the ARR Dragoon uh, and is a key story member of the Dragon Song War arc in Heavensward. Make no mistake. Mm -hmm. um, will make a reference to there being two Azure Dragoons in Ishgard, because if you complete the level fifty quest for uh, for Dragoon, uh, you get a set of Azure Dragoon armor as well. Mm -hmm. And it's it is those tiny little things the persistence and consistency of your character's status within the world within char other characters around him people who remember you in a specific fashion if you've done missions even the seasonal moonfire fair missions if you've done ones in the past and you come back for them in the next year the npcs there will be like hey it's good to see you again didn't we see you last moonfire fair or didn't we see you, you know, at a previous Moonfire Fair? Um, it, it is this attention to detail for your character being a persistent object that has an actual effect, not just within these grandiose, fateful events, but in the little lives of the little people around them. Mm-hmm. That makes the world feel like it's living and breathing, and your character is central to the core mechanics of that world. Yeah, and 
Now one one might ar one might argue one one might argue that um that um that I'm overlooking the ad the adventuring company and what and what's the difference between that and some of the non non in non um non inter non par non um multiplayer interactions that um that wa that WoW had. The difference is that the difference is that one you need to actually get a cert you need to actually get a degree of advancement within the, your chosen grand company even to get those NPCs and two. Um, there's st the the major story elements still involve still require you to actually have a proper party. The NPC things are just are just more more akin more akin to backup when you're do when you're doing things like fates or guild or guild leaves. Because you know, it's can it's kind of hard to do some to do some of them when you're when you're say a healer. It's not to say you can't. It's just that it's going to be trickier. Yeah. Just spam. Just spam holy. You'll be fine. <laughs> no, I remember when that actually was the answer. Heaven's word. Spamming holy was the best way to get through packs of mobs with with a white mage. If you were in a in some place like a I don't know a Tantara Deepcroft hard. Yeah, I'm just I'm just using that as an as an exa as an example. Oh, um, I know. I'm just throwing shit at, at white mages. Yeah, there's all there's also the fact that there isn't anything as that even though there's personal housing, there isn't anything as dumb as garrisons. Garrisons were a nut were a neat idea in the wrong game. Cuz the the idea of the idea of built the idea of building up that house um it's n it's nice and all, but they that they went too far with things like Oh, you can grow your own plants, so you don't need to go out. You don't need to go out foraging. You can you can get you can get your own mine, so you don't have to go around mining. You can get you can get your own NPC 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 shop to sell at, so you don't have to bother with the auction house. You know, ta a lot of the garrison stuff was taking away from interacting with other players. And. Even even with the whole NPC allies thing or the upcoming trust system, you're still you still you still have to interact with other players on some level, even if it's just even if it's just not saying anything during duties. Oh. And there's a give and take, right? Like it's gonna be less efficient. Mm hmm I can't I can't see. I can't speak too much on the on the trust system because that's not out. Because I don't think that's out yet. Yeah, it's not. That's. Uh, it's it. It's out. It's oh, it's starting Shadowbringers. Yeah. Never. Never mind. Never mind. I don't know why I thought it wasn't out yet. Um. But when it comes to when it comes to when it, when it comes to the when it comes to things things like um. Things like things like fates and things like guild leaves. It could be argued that they're just quests, but they're but at the very least, they're a means of keeping you, ex keeping you in 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 exploring the world. Um, mm -hmm. and keep and instead instead of instead of just having it that you're always that you're in a hub and then you're outside of that hub, for in for instances. Now, I'd. I will I will admit that pe that people who are PVP PVP obsessed will probably not be a fan of the lack of an open world PVP. I'm personally fine with that because in my experience open world PVP is a one-way ticket to griefing. Mm -hmm. As some as somebody who had to deal who had to deal with yellow with yellow tag sitters in the old republic, I'm perfectly fine with PVP being its own being its own separate zone. Um, there's also the fact that FF14 is, um, while, while PvP is certainly a thing, it's not the primary focus. In fact, I'd, ar I'd argue that PvP-centric MMOs tend to not last. Large, largely because of the fact that the people who start out good, start out good end up staying at the top, but... But they end up being so dominant at at it, at it that people coming in don't have a means to compete. They don't have it. This is the reason why in a lo in a lot of multiplayer games you have, ideally, a ranked system. So it's not it's not a, it's not just the people at the top bullying everybody below them. 
you you can you can get you can get in fights with people of your relative rank and try and get better. Oh. But I'd 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 also be I'd also be remiss if I did if I didn't if I didn't if I didn't point out that you know how I, you know how I mentioned the the um the fact that it's that an expansion is more just than than just the expansion but also the stuff in between them mm -hmm. that particular part of the story is ju it is treated just as important in fact I'd, in fact I'd say I'd say some somebody going from the from the end of a realm reborn with with you beating Ultima weapon straight into the beginning of heaven's ward like the actual beginning when you're arriving at Ishgard is going to be lost. Yeah, it wouldn't yeah. work. You'd have no, you'd have no uh, context for why you're in Ishgard. Mm -hmm. And plus, you would miss all the setup for later, uh, later expansions. Um, I think that's another thing to point out that even in 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 as early as a Realm Reborn patch content leading to Heavensward, we saw the um, foundation for Stormblood mm -hmm. in the crystal in the Crystal Braves and of course Oof. fucking Ilbert. Fucking Ilbert. Mm -hmm. Um and that whole build up to uh what would eventually lead into Stormblood and what would happen there. Plus, you know, Yugiri shows up and there's more Stormblood content there. Yeah. <laughs> um and then the same thing happens with content in Heaven's Word. You see the the build up for Shadowbringers. Mm-hmm. Now, each within the funny thing is is that there, is that while while gear is while gear certainly plays a factor, you don't have that same gear based progression. I'd say the closest thing to that is materia, and even that's a stretch. Yeah, there is an item level, and later stuff does require higher item level in the patches. But your progression is primarily based around what you're doing. Which and I, it's I... really easy to get. Well, they they have different avenues to get new gear, right? Because you could get the tombstone gear, um, but then you could also get um, just like the crafted gear, and you would be pretty much set, or just the say... gear from dungeons. Even just for me, uh, like I was with my samurai, I had a, I w <laughs> just to even go through story, the gear they gave me was only two points short of an item level total for me to do the dungeon for story, and I just yeah I just went to the auction house, paid like ten thousand dollars, and it was good to go. Mm -hmm. Ten thousand gil ain't much. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it was super accessible just to just to bump myself up and get going again. I want to say my static had like. The top level crafted gear, uh, like right out of the gate of Star of Shadowbringers. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason the reason why I'm bringing up these comparisons is because a, a lot of these stands have have tried to pull appeals to hypocrisy. Of uh, oh it ha oh there's this there's this thing in FF in FF14. So so you so you're so you're being biased against you're being biased against us. Kind of kind of mentality. I see that quite a bit. Just because the same thing, or the same thing that appears to be the same thing, is in each game, doesn't mean it's the same thing. On the surface, sure, item levels, sure, of a of level skip token of some sort, sure, these these things exist. What we're arguing is that the implementation is vastly different to the point of one being actively detrimental and the other being nothing but beneficial. Nothing but beneficial, or or something that you, or something that you're just not going to lose sleep over. Yeah, I mean, yeah. no, nobody's going to lose sleep over over the level skip tokens in, in FF14. Nobody. Mm -hmm. It's there, and if people want to use it, sure, they can spend their twenty five bucks how they want to spend it. Yeah. It's not constantly breathed down your throat. Mm -hmm. And I think that I think the fact that even even with 
the in the massive influx of new of newcomers that that, that um square that Yoshi P and company have taken a very stay the course attitude is quite telling because it would be very easy to to do panic moves when you've got when you've got a whole bunch of people coming in or or a whole bunch of people leaving for that matter but that hasn't happened like they sometimes have a little bit of a dip when there's uh when there's content when there's content droughts mm -hmm. and that happens to all MMOs. and they're they're well they're well aware of that they've made, right. they've, mm -hmm. they've made it clear that they're perfectly fine with people taking a break until the next expansion comes the yeah. game's designed to fit with that lifestyle, right? Like it's yeah. casual friendly. Because they're they're I'd I'd say it, I'd say it's more that they're not that there isn't a hyper focus on quote unquote engagement, which is one of those trends that I and I'm pretty sure the rest of you have been have become gradually sick of. Of doing there should go ahead. There should be a, a level of engagement, always. If you're not engaged at all, you're not going to track, to track players or customers. Yeah. But a hyper-focus, yeah, that was annoying as shit. Um, I'm, when I'm specifically referring to engagement, I'm referring to the kind of engagement metrics that's, that some companies are obsessed with and putting things in solely to keep, solely to keep people engaged. Um, yeah. Case in point, um, Ubisoft's bullshit. Case in point, most of Warframe. I have a love-hate relationship with Warframe. You love to hate it. <laughs> I I respect the I I respect the pa I respect the passion that Digital Extremes has, and I enjoy I enjoy some I enjoy some of the community devs getting trolled relentlessly. <laughs> like and I said, I, you love to hate it. But there but there are but there are a lot of things there, there are a lot of things in Warframe that definitely do annoy me. So yeah. Um, but as a bit of an aside, I'd like to, I'd like to have a bit, of, I'd like to have a bit of fun at FF14's expense. And let's take, let's take a bit of time picking on and roasting all of the classes. And maybe the, ra maybe the races <laughs> at the end. <laughs> okay. So, we'll start with tanks. And obviously the first one we have to do is Paladin. You are vanilla. You are, you are the knight in shining armor. You think you think that you're the front cover of an you think that you're the front cover of a of a power metal album cover when re, when really you when really you're just one step away from darkness as in as in Konosuba darkness <laughs> You all you also ha, you also have the least interesting um cla you also have the least interesting class gauge to the point where I couldn't use it for the for the FF legend project Yeah. The class gauge matches the class quests, yeah? Ha! <laughs> uh, the paladin quests are... The paladin quests are the oh. only ones I actively skipped. I just, I couldn't. <laughs> also, you have, you, have a, you, have a start, you have a starting weapon early on in ARR that nobody can pronounce but Xan and myself. You're talking about the, uh... The weapon that is two boards with uh, with obsidian in them. Yes. <laughs> Yowie paddle. <laughs> I, don't know what, I don't know whether to I don't know whether to applaud you, to sh to shake my head, or to bonk you and send you to horny jail. Yes. <laughs> Good answer. It, 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 it's it's he's 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 talking about the Makuhuidal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you get it at like level ten, I think. Yeah. It's all it, it's very early game. It's very early game. I just I just found it funny that that was even included in the game because that's an that isn't it's it's being used by a sword and board class, and that's not a sword. That's a club. It's a club with 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 obsidian shards in it. They get other forms of it. Uh, Data dash, Makuhiro, in a at level twenty five, 
El Makuhito and and Ethereal El Makuhito at twenty eight. Mm-hmm. I'm currently looking at a chart on the Final Fantasy Wiki. Yeah, Walnut. it's just, it's just fun. It's it's just fun. It's just funny to it's just funny to me. But next we have next we have the Mara- the Warrior. You were gonna say Marauder, weren't you? Yes, I wa- yes I was. <laughs> you are you. You really, really, really like having your HP as high as possible, just as if it's a dick measuring contest. When my friend was leveling Warrior, he actively told me not to heal him. Because we were doing (laughs) like a tank healer combo. And I was like, you're gonna. You're gonna. No, because they have that that skill that turns all of their hits into uh, life drain for the next like thirty seconds. And they give me bad habits. <laughs> That's true. It gives you a bad habit, healer. Um, but the other half of warrior is uh is eternal off tank. <laughs> you will never be a main. T- Eternal off tank. You will never be a main tank as warrior because you're you're good. You're good at one thing. Being that guy who takes lots of hits, you're not as good at enmity management as any other tank. I was just gonna say rage slash repeatedly over and over again. <laughs> also, you are you you so you solely pi- you solely picked Warrior because because you happened to watch Conan once. <laughs> what is best in life? To crush oh, our man. enemies, to see them driven before us, and to hear the lamentations of their women. I can never remember that quote, but I, I know it. <laughs> Next is Dark Knight. You are a fan of Kentaro Miura, which means you know pain. I don't want to talk about it. You are oh, you you are also frequently accused of being an edge lord, which you are not. That's for the ninjas. <laughs> or the or the reapers when N Walker comes out. You really, mm. really, 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 really hate mages and you want them to die horribly. Yeah. You also have a voice in your head. Don't we all? Semantics. Yeah, it's called my throat. Phrasing. Thank you. Yep, phrasing. <laughs> Both berries out. Um, you oh, you also probably have you also probably have the the com- the collected works of Danny Elfman on your playlist whenever whenever you're fighting trash mobs. I can actually already hear it in my head. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> also, your final, your favorite Final Fantasy is four. No, my favorite Final Fantasy is six. You got that wrong, Monk. Huh? I'm talking about Dark Knights in general. You're the exception. I am the exception that proves many rules, not just this one. <laughs> Gunbreaker, you really, really like Final Fantasy VIII. You really, really, really hate Spoonie. You really are you. You are really confused about whether or not you want to shoot someone or stab someone. You al- you you also play way too many character action games. You can't see it, but I'm raising my hand. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm sitting here looking at Bayonetta and Devil May Cry and Killer is Dead and Astral Say, Chain. I, I should be holding my hand. I just finished playing Transformers Devastation. Yeah, the Transformers character action game. Let's see, Assault Spy, um, Luca, <laughs> uh huh, um, Rainblood Chronicles Mirage, yep. i.e., the game I never shut up about, um, <laughs> Astral Chain, uh huh. Um, suff- um. If you want to count, if you want to count Otogi, we can count Otogi, the Ninja Gaiden games, including suffering through Vanilla Ninja Gaiden Two, which is the reason why I have eternal hatred towards Itagaki. 
Bright memory oh, and bright I'll memory infinite. Yep. Gosh. Um, technically, technically, all of the Soulsborne games are character action games as well as RPGs. I'd say, especially, I'd say, especially it's, Sekiro. Yes. Especially Sekiro. Um, I, I'm sorry. Uh, did we all just kind of show ourselves as gun breakers? Your art right now is a gun breaker. Shh. You don't need to know that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Monks. You like... You, you, like pun you like punching things. You like kung fu. You probably play a deck building game. And you... And you, and you have a... And you have a bunch of... And you have a handful of stances nobody uses. I also bet that you main Little Mac. <laughs> Hey, I take offense to that because it's true. <laughs> bitch, please, bitch, please. <laughs> if we want to, if we want to talk about that, I mean Steve Fox. I mean, I'm I'm kind of uh, predictable here. I mean Cloud. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I, I had to bring up t I had to bring up Tekken. If I'm if I'm meaning if I'm if I'm meaning something in um in in Smash um. As much, much as I hate to admit it, I do. I ha I have main Sephiroth. I cycle. I cycle between. I don't. Truth be told, I don't really main characters all that much. I I cycle through people. Because I find if I main I somebody, most... if I main somebody for too long, I start making mistakes. Mm -hmm. I do that with Smash Brothers specifically, but I can't say I main someone, and that's uh, that's that's Gandorf, and that's only because I've been playing him since Melee. Mm -hmm. He mains literally the worst character in the game. Not anymore. I mean, <laughs> was fair, but he had he so had no was. good matchups for a long yeah. time on the tier lists. Also, if you play monk, um, if you, it and you and you end up singing kung fu fighting dur during raids, the entire party hates you. <laughs> just giving me you said you just giving me something new to want to strive for. I oh, take no responsibility for what happens afterwards. Someone's gonna make that their macro. Oh. Uh, but even so, when's the last time you saw anybody using the element stances? Besides fire? No. When they want to run fast. <laughs> Either you run good or you punch good. You don't need anything else. Yeah. Next. And now you don't even. Go ahead. I was gonna say, and now you don't even need wind stance. Just continue to spam sprint. You don't have TP anymore to hold you back. Mm -hmm. Dragoons. <sighs> you are. You were known as the Red Stick. You are. A, you are. You have a. T you have a tank build, and you're a DPS. You. You um you are very very good at pissing off the tank because jump can because jump can draw aggro very easily. <laughs> Not to mention if you don't weave your jumps in right, you're dead, and now you're tanking the floor. <laughs> and some and some people will immediately disband parties if you show up. Happens. Anybody who does that is stupid. Oh, that's stupid, but it happens. It's happened to me. So dumb. Just remember that Chaos Thrust makes barking sounds, which is the most amusing thing ever. <laughs> oh. Ninjas. You went from being a pi from being a pirate to being Japanese. Turning Bigger Japanese. I think I'm turning <laughs> Japanese. I nearly think so. Oh. <laughs> figure that figure that out. You... Just like Kirsten Dunst went from being Mary Jane to a weeb, until she was bitching about not get about not getting paid as much as the lead actress. But rails, you can't you can't seem to decide if you if you want to get if you want to cross blades or you want to cast or you want to cross casting. But you don't want to be a full ca but you don't want to actually be a caster. You. You th you think that you um 
You think that you you think that your blades were folded one thousand times were folded one thousand times, and you and you may have and you may have shouted "Ninja vanish" whenever you whenever you leave an instance. Man, I wish I had had that as a macro for when I left instances. So, samurai, you're a fucking weeb. You are the weebest of weebs. You are more weeb than the people than the ninjas who insist on Naruto running. While other people were getting laid in high school, you were b busy studying the way of the blade. <laughs> you ha you have inherited the you have inherited the le you should be thanking whatever gods you pray to that the that the samurai class did not use the old draw out system that was that was in that was in um FF6. Uh Ian, you are the best samurai. You wait long enough to nearly die, and then you utterly kill things. That being said, I, I still hated I still hated that whole draw out and then run the risk of breaking your damn sword. <sighs> that was only in eleven, wasn't it? Um, so I don't, I don't remember sword breakage being a thing in six. Yeah, I, I just like I just like poking fun at at draw at um draw out. Mm -hmm. Um, because 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 of the whole the whole exhausting and the like. Um, yeah. As much as I like I like cyan, but you know, but rules are rules. Indeed. We will not be roasting the Reaper tonight because it's kind of hard to roast a class that none of us have have had the chance to play yet. So instead, we go with the Bard. Congratulations, you <laughs> suck less than the D and D Bard. Not that that's saying much. It's a low bar. Duh. <laughs> All the casual class, though. You are you are the you are the class for filthy casuals, a streamers, and Xavier Woods. You're also the class for any failed mu music major, because now they can hey. feel like they make music. <laughs> I was gonna say I only play bard. Only got a uh, bard up to level thirty just so I could play music. <laughs> You're pr you're probably you probably are also a Legend of Zelda fan who think who thinks that they're chic, <laughs> or you or you th or you're or you're just or you're just a Legend of Zelda fan who 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 can't play an ocarina. Mickey, if you're watching, that one was for you. <laughs> you do know that she is a bard maid, right? Yes, that's why he said it. Oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> Look. I do not. I do not aspire to hit someone while they down. While they're down, I aspire to kick them because that's easier. You know, as a former bard main, uh, fair. <laughs> also, no matter, no matter how, no. Also, you will be called Spoony. No matter, you cannot escape it. But at least you won't be calling you Spoony as in the Spoony experiment, because nobody can be as bad as he is. No. But I, I, I will, but I will probably, I will probably call you Yamcha, because I, because Darkness Rising has taught us one thing: bars are the first to die. If the black guy is the first to die in a horror film, the bard is the first to to die in a fantasy game. Why are you lining up another? It's an only because you're black joke for me, monk. <laughs> because you're gonna do it eventually, so I may as well get it out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> So, machinist, you're an engineer. That means you solve problems, not the conundrums of what, not things like what is beauty, because that falls into the purview of your conundrums of philosophy. You solve practical problems, like what am I going to do when some mean mother amalgia wants to train me a structurally superfluous new beehive? The answer: use a gun. And if that don't work, use more gun. That is that is who you played in TF2. If you're picking machinist, you all you also th you also think helicopters are cool. You probably have Flight of the Valkyries playing while you're dealing with trash mobs. You oh you also th you also you also probably think you also probably um do very very bad John Wayne impressions or bad Dirty Harry impressions. Mm-hmm. That be, that being that being said, you pro, you are probably played by Revolver Ocelot. 
played by Revolver Ocelot. <laughs> no, Shala Shaska. As played by Revolver Ocelot, played by Revolver Ocelot. As played by Liquid Snake, as played by Liquid Ocelot. <laughs> We can keep going down this snake hole, but uh, I don't think we have that much time. How many layers of irony are we down? <laughs> yes. Not enough. Is this like going to a B-movie theater where they're actually showing B-movie? Yes. This is also like going to the Rocky Horror Picture Show and they're just playing a slideshow. Anyway, Dancer. You ha you um you are probably one of the poor unfortunate souls who thinks we are the gull wings is good music. Mm, mm, I hate you! I hate you! <laughs> you stop that! <laughs> Pay hex a bitch, ain't it? You have to suffer with me! <laughs> you son of a bitch! <laughs> for those of you who don't understand for those of you who don't understand I dare you to go look up where the gull wings and listen to that travesty it is the reason Final Fantasy X-2 is the worst game that has the Final Fantasy name on it because they fucked the music even Final Fantasy XIII as sometimes boring and mediocre as it is never fucked the music what, Fuck not... you, monk. <laughs> Eat shit. You suffered to say it anyway. I already know you did. Because <laughs> you can hear it in your head. I hear a lot of things in my head. But... You, Are you but, a dark man? But you... Ha but you are, cer you, are certainly a, you are certainly a fan of yourself. Um... And let and let's be honest, you're probably playing Viera. I would say that a disproportionate amount of dancers are probably Viera, yeah. So then we get to Black Mage. You are not as black as me. You you are No bar monk. You are you are you pro you probably you probably have you probably have watched Fire and Ice to the point of memorization. You <laughs> you th you thumb you thumb your no you thumb your nose at at other at other mages because you th because you were here first. And you and you th and you um unfor you unfortunately do not have the glowing yellow eyes of the, of the of entries past. However, what's worse than that, you also do not know a move that allows you to deplete love from the world as your ultimate attack, causing the divorce rate to spike significantly every time you use the Unda Pugnius. <laughs> also known as the Hadoken. Thank you, 8-Bit Theater. You can only use that spell once a day. Curse you, Jack Vance. <laughs> <laughs> We're not doing fancy and magic. This is advanced fuck off. Anyway, summoner. <laughs> you like pets. You pro you pro you were probably playing you're probably playing a hunter in World of Warcraft or you were pro or you were probably playing a druid in in World of Warcraft. You would you would rather you would rather sit back and watch other people do all the work. And you and you ha and you th and you think that you think that summoning a fire demon is cute. Pro you're probably a goth. I would say that that changed with Stormblood. Anybody who became a summoner only did so th so they could try and summon Bahamut. Um, you are all you if, as a summoner. You are also you are also you are also the you are also the spoil. You are the spoiled child of the of the Final Fantasy job system for years. It doesn't exactly hurt that an entire game was built or, was built around your ass. 
Red Mage, you are a magnificent bastard, and you know it. You prob you probably have you probably have every Errol Flynn movie memorized. You are those you are also the most indecisive person, and are probably the person who does the uh who makes the uh sound whenever you order at restaurants. You probably also you probably also fill up your plate with everything at buffet lines. And you probably quote Inigo Montoya way too much. Mm -hmm. Despite uh, despite all despite all of your love for fencing, you rarely use your sword, at least compared to the people who actually know how to use their swords. You are the you are also the embodiment of the he's got a sword of the he's got a sword scene from Aladdin. You idiots! We've all got swords. Mm -hmm. Blue mages. You are drugs. You are drugs. You are more drugs than Hunter S. Thompson on a be on a bender. Now, monk, let's not disparage Hunter S. Thompson. You pro you probably have you have spent this entire franchise being a masochist. Or the lead guy from Needless, whichever you prefer. <laughs> Whoever remembers Needless, you get a cookie. Yay, a stale cookie. Um, you are you are all you are also the gimmickiest of gi of gimmicks, and you and you and you exist and you exist just to taunt everyone else. My favorite thing about Blue Mages is the fact that they can kill themselves to kill Ifrit. <laughs> What? Nobody's done the final sting uh, thing yet. You you also you also probably um you pro you pro you probably have Arabian Nights memorized. Huh. White mage. You tried to look like a druid but you couldn't commit. You had you had you have you started out with a wood you started out with a wooden shield, but was but that was absolutely pointless. You are you so you solely ex for for a lot of other people who aren't dedicated to you you solely exist so that they could learn protect. Hmm. Back in the day when you actually had to do cross class skills before Stormblood. You, uh, you, if all if all else fails, we can take your robe and use it as a flag. <laughs> I mean, we're not French here. Yeah. Tell that to Alice and Alphano and all of Ishgard, <laughs> or all of the Elizans. Are all of is French named? Mm hmm. Um, maybe the Duskrite. Are the exceptions, but I think they're also pretty French. Well, the, like we're not as not as French as Ishgard, but they're pretty French. Well, if you're if you're gonna go that route, then let's not forget that all the Gar all the Garlians are apparently Italian. Italian or or Roman. But the other, the the of course the other, of course the other thing with with white mages is that for for some of your stories you're a fucking hippie you're also fr you're also from Gridania, which mean which means that you have to deal with hippies all the time get a real job <laughs> speaking of which scholar in a few weeks you're going to be the saltiest motherfuckers in the entire game yeah, because you can no longer just sit back and let the fairy do all the work. I'm laughing at that because it's so totally true. Since I'm currently playing scholar as a healer class, <laughs> scholars have been bitch. Scholars have been bitching for a while, and for for the longest time, I figured, oh, it's because scholars are never happy about anything. No, it's because <laughs> no, it's because they actually have to interact with everyone now. <laughs> Instead of just focusing on the DPS while one of your two fucking fairies does everything else. Mm -hmm. With the occasional swift cast revive here and there. Yep. Astrologian. 
Do you like gambling? Do you like gambling with your life? I bet you're a Virgo who believes that astrology is real. <laughs> you're you're pro you probably all you probably called Miss Cleo at least once. You oh you also you also probably can give can give me a le a lengthy a lengthy lecture on the true meaning of all of all of the arcana, and then I will laugh at you. Largely because you're not telling me anything I don't already know. <laughs> Not to mention, you wish you had an armillary sphere, if you even knew what the fuck that was. Which is that? Is that a is that a plug for the for the Everway Persona episode? <laughs> it might have been. But even but even be even beyond that, you you were you were pro you were probably voted most likely to trip over their own hat. Trip over their own hat, monk. Don't you mean lose their hat when they walk into any room? That too. At the very, at the very least, I just, at the very least, I just get headaches when I walk into a room because tall guy problems. Indeed. You. Uh, we will not talk about. We will not talk. I will say one thing about. I will say one thing about Sage. You prob. You probably watched Shar's counterattack too many times. There are three quotes I have to use here. The first one, probably the second most famous quote, from behind. <laughs> <clears throat> the second quote, probably the most famous quote, you hit me. My father never even hit me. <laughs> and then, well, of course, the uh, the final quote, sure. <laughs> um. Also. You do you do realize that you can't actually be the high new Gundam, right? Mm -hmm. And while while I'm at it, Reaper, you are not a JoJo reference. Stop trying. Nor are you the Death Scythe. Nope. And I would I would roast the Disciples of the Land in hand, but there's not a whole lot of material to ro to roast with. Which might be a roast in and of itself. Possibly. Um. Although, but I will, I will rate, I will roast the races. Uh -oh. Um, Hure, you are standard. You're the bog standard. Um, looks like I'm having technical difficulties. I might have to dip out real quick. Ellison, now listen to me, you thing. knife eared piece of shit. Not a knife. Now this, this thing that cuts down trees, seventy-two a minute. This is a knife. You goddamn knife, you bastard! Don't Thank you make me look up at you. You could, you come down to my level. <laughs> Great to see a return of the of the dwarven druid. Now get the fuck out of my forest before I make more knives out of the trees themselves and poke you shiny bastards with it. <laughs> <laughs> Mikote. Wait, I forgot one. Lalafell. Ladies and gentlemen of the temple and of the and of the watch, I would like to inform you to do your civic duty. Bully a potato. Dub also, if you see a if you see a if you see a Lalafell, just remember, take three steps back, drop back, and punt. I was gonna say, I'm pretty <laughs> sure that. While every other race in Endwalker is going to somehow get to the moon via uh, an equivalent to the lunar whale, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure the Lalafell space program is just getting a tall guy to kick them to the moon. Yes. <laughs> just, re just, because re just remember, they are they are potatoes. They they are potatoes and de and deserve and deserve and deserve to be and deserve to be consistently and constantly bullied. The Taru Taru were better. Yes, Shantota was a Taru Taru, and I'm not going to be kicking her. <laughs> I think that has more to do with the fact that she'd light you on fire, Monk. While la while la while doing the Naga laugh. Yep. <laughs> For somebody so small, she acts real tall. Mm -hmm. But that's rails. Yeah. Um, Rogel done. 
You are the equivalent what? of tall. Oh, sorry, I forgot one. Mikote. The unho the unholy combination of weebness is when is a Mikote samurai. <laughs> the edgiest weeb is a Mikote ninja. You are. <laughs> You are a cat boy or a cat or a cat girl. You are pr you were probably you were probably domestically engineered by Elon Musk. And I'm guessing that 95% of you all went with heterochromia to try and be special. Yep, much in the much in the same way that you're the equivalent of the D and D player who thinks that their tiefling warlock is a unique character. <laughs> <laughs> you. Pro you probably, you probably, you probably also, you probably also, you probably also have a, have a fridge full of milk, or or even or even worse, you have, you have a fridge full of coconut milk. Oh. Uh, you all, you also probably really, really hate it when people grab you by the tail. Except for the one percent of you who are probably into that. <laughs> If people like to, a little bit of ass grabbing, uh, you pro you probably really you probably really hate spin me around by dead or alive because of um ex because of bad experiences. Let's say <laughs> probably also you you probably you probably also hated the um the whirly bird. <laughs> or your or your your worst Olympic sport was the hammer throw. Uh. <laughs> Enjoy the mental images, spoiler. Okay. <laughs> that was the quietest, most resigned okay I've ever heard. <laughs> Rogaldon, you Rogadden. hate. Ro sorry. Rogadon, not Rogaldor in the system. <laughs> no, that is against the law. It is. Is it against the law to have fun in this Imperium? Yes. There are seven. Was it seven hundred and twenty-three different uh, different laws against it in the Imperial Code? Yes. <laughs> um, Rog yes, Rogadon. Yes, Rogadon. You probably hate clothes shopping as much as I do. You pro you probably end up banging your head on on ce on ceilings, and 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 entryways as much as Zan and myself do. Indeed. You pro I'm pretty and every every ta every tailor within within the three within the three grand companies, absolute absolutely doesn't like you because you keep shouting at them that 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 it doesn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> also, most of you have a closet fetish for pointy teeth. Telling you right now that about most of the Rogadon players out there, I bet you anything have a fetish for Merovib. Pro probably <sighs> wanted to try and probably wanted to try and pay, pick probably pick Machina so they could try and shoot so they can try and shoot the gun the same way she does sideways. <laughs> oh, Aura. You're in a contest to see if you can out to see if you can outweave the Makote. You're losing. You're you're lo you are losing. Um, you probably really you probably get really mad whenever whenever anyone whenever anyone makes um brings brings up the song the Dragonborn comes. You probably are you probably are really really sick of of. Of a, of being asked if you can breathe fire. You're also probably really sick of hearing through the fire and the flames for the millionth time. Mm hmm. Oh. Almost as sick as Herman Lee is. <laughs> and he subjects himself to listening to that at least once a day on his streams. Mm -hmm. Hrothgar. You're a fur. You're a furry. Feeling called out yet, buddy? Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny because I went from being a cat got to from being a cat boy into being a full on cat. You pro you pro you really hate water. You really hate and you especially hate getting wet. 
you... Considering he lives in the PNW, I don't think that's the case here. <laughs> you pro you prob you probably have you have to deal with you have to deal with all you have to deal with all of the same tail problems that the Makote do. But you ha but you have you have the at you have the added mis you have the added misfortune of 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 being ignored because you're not as cute. <laughs> not to mention they're all too horny all the time. But on yes. Tish. You will be you will be sent you will always be sent to horny jail. No matter how many times people say you will claim otherwise, you have you have no relation to the Ronso tribe. And that's where it hurts the most. <laughs> I mean, it's not like you made yourself look almost exactly like Kimari or anything. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> At the very, at the very least, you at the very least you are not the obnoxious type of furry, so we will, so we will not be getting the flammenwerfer. <laughs> not even the, not, not even, and especially, you're spared the heavy, the heavy flammenwerfer. But don't worry, today we're not werfing flammen at you. No. How? If I am the obnoxious type of furry. Cause I've uh, seen some stuff in Limsa, but uh... have you ever heard of Have you ever heard of Rain Forest? Yes. Then you know the answer. Point. <sighs> I've seen some stuff in Limsa, though. <laughs> oh, I oh I don't I don't doubt that for a minute because um, spoiler, you should know by now that the things that you have seen are are a drop in the bucket compared to the things that Zan and myself have seen. I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, probably or zero. zero. Yeah, probably you as well, zero. But I, but I can't, I can't vouch for that far. But you're, but we've all seen our fair share of of things we can't talk about here. Yeah, yeah. zero's zero's an old hand at the chance. Okay, so he, so he, so he know so he knows just as much as uh, just as much as us. And lastly, yes. Vieras. About, yeah. Um, you probably you probably. You pro you probably have played Final Fantasy Tactics Advance enough times so that you can so that you can use the ultimate exploit, and you probably really really hate cards that are yellow or red. <laughs> you also pr you also probably have a you also probably have a body pillow of um of Fran, which also means you hate hearing I'm Captain Bosch von Ronsenberger of Dalmasca. <laughs> oh my God. You, uh, you pro, you pro, you probably let you probably like Playboy bunnies. I doubt actually that the people who play Viera would like current Playboy bunnies. They probably like vintage Playboy bunnies, Monk. Yeah, because they're high class. <laughs> <laughs> Side note, um, just a, another shameless plug for the monastery here. We do plan on doing a uh, reconstruction of Final Fantasy XII down the road. Keep yes. an eye out. Um, I believe we'll be doing that before the year. I believe we'll be doing that either before the year is out or early next year. Let me check. Um, no, we're d no, we're doing that. Ne we're doing that early next year. Yep. Keep an eye out. Mm -hmm. But uh, don't worry. At least there will be no Von or Penelo if we can help it. <laughs> Or at least, at least, at least not in the at least not in the way that they're that they're presently shown. Um, but e even with that, as a, as a bit of a as a bit of a capstone for everything, I want I do want to make I do want to make something clear. I am I have no in I have no interest or desire in in the in the idea of hoping that World of Warcraft goes under and shuts down or or something like that. I merely I merely look at what's been happening as as the consequences of the of actions. I take no I take no pleasure in the current state of WoW and I take no even though I do take a great deal of pleasure in the current state of FF14. It is it is merely the, is merely the fact that that if you had made the right decisions WoW you could have stayed on top or at, at least for a few more years. But you got arrogant, and you got complacent. Two things that the gods really do not care for, and they w and they will str and they will all and karma always 
strikes down the the arrogant and the complacent. It may t it may take a while, but it all but it always comes around. Which is which is what which is why I know that I know that I know that a 9.1.5 patch is on the way, but to be quite honest, it's one it's too little, too late, and two, trying to advertise it as, as if it's the end of the story that you've been building up to since the RTS games, nobody's buying that. They didn't but they didn't buy it they didn't buy it when you introduced Zoval as if he was the true mastermind behind everything. They don't buy it now because because as we mentioned before, flattening the world doesn't work. However, as we've as we mentioned to as we mentioned to some of these stands when it came to the previous parts of the Exodus trilogy, the the people the people who insist on it, if if that if that's your bag, go go right ahead. But do not, but do not, under any circumstances, try and convince me that reality isn't what is in front of me. The people who the people who are leaving are not are not leaving because they're haters or be, or because or because they're trend hoppers or anything like that. They're leaving because what what because what WoW promised them isn't being delivered on, and they're going to go elsewhere. For some, it's going to be New World. For some, it's going to be Lost Ark. For others, it's going to be Final Fantasy XIV. What their reason, their reason for leaving, is not as important as the fact that they are that they are, and they are in droves. And it's a, it, it, and the ball is in York. The ball is in Blizzard's court to course correct. However, I feel I feel that the only way for them to do that is for is is going to be in the form of X Blizzard Studios, your, which you are going to see quite a bit of. In the, you're already starting to see that now. And you're going to see more of that. I would, however, advise a lot advise a lot of the player base of FF14 to do two things. One, don't thumb your nose at the rookies. Teach teach them teach them the ways of Eorzea. Teach them the ways of of Heidlin of all made one, and in that in that same vein, do not succumb to that same degree of arrogance. Yoshi P cer Yoshi P certainly doesn't. He does He has no interest in doing in doing a WoW versus FF14 comparison. In fact, he keeps doubt. He keeps trying to distance himself from that. Mostly because he's too busy eating salads <laughs> and surfing. But I'd but I'd say I'd say one of the big one of the big case in points dur during this whole thing has been Hironobu Sakaguchi both playing and enjoying his time with FF14. When back in the day he was vehemently against the idea of an online Final Fantasy. Yeah. I remember um, hearing talks about that, but never looked it up. Looked it up. Sakaguchi had okay. So there's a love letter he even wrote about it just a while back, um, about how much he has enjoyed playing Final Fantasy XIV. Now, admittedly, Sakaguchi is getting kind of a guided tour slash bus because they want him to have as much as much fun as possible. But um, <clears throat> been really fun, like even just getting his snapshots of. What he's been doing. Exactly. Um, Sakaguchi has had nothing but good things to say since he started playing. Which is absolutely telling. Yeah. Like I said, he was he he um he was not fond of eleven. He was the idea of an MM, the idea of an online Final Fantasy didn't did not sit with him. I don't. I don't recall. I don't recall the f the full details, but some some have argued that was one of the reasons that he le that he left and formed Mistwalker. Although, truth. Although truth. Although, if I'm being honest, his te his um the tenure of Mistwalker as a studio wasn't exact hasn't exactly been great. Well, and also he left in 2004, so this is even before 14 was a glimmer in the eye of of 
Yeah, I'm, ref I'm referring to I'm referring to eleven. Eleven. When I, say, when I say that he was against the idea of an online Final Fantasy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. <clears throat> but see, um. Were were there any were there any highlights in that in that letter that he that he wrote that you recall? Um, I'd have to actually find the tweet again that had it written out. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have you do that. It because tr because trying to trying to go through those kind of archives, especially ha especially when having when you have to um, translate it or or yeah. put it through or put it through, or put it through a translation API, not worth not worth the effort. I know that there's um, a Japanese YouTuber who's been... He, he made several videos uh, translating his tweets and basically um, describing like Sakaguchi's experience from, from what we've been seeing. So um, I might have to dig up that channel again. But he I might have, have a... I have you know. heard that one of the people helping him out is Masuda, i.e. Mm -hmm. i.e. the the man, the man behind Ogre Battle, and then later on Tactics. Mm, mm -hmm. Who I'm glad to uh, see. The, he, I'm glad to see he's in good health because he's had health problems throughout his career. It's a there's a um there, there's just one problem, Monk. Just one terrible, horrible problem. What? We have to bully Sakaguchi. He plays a potato. <laughs> I love you, man, but the rules. The, are the rules, rules are the rules. <laughs> So yeah, if I if I if by some miracle I see Sakaguchi, which is probably unlikely because I'm not playing on a Japanese server, um, I would have to punt him. <laughs> yeah, he he synced up with Matsuno over Zoom, uh, who taught him how to use the UI for the game. Mm -hmm. It was so awesome. And seeing seeing that kind of th seeing that kind of thing and seeing the, and seeing the Obvious, obviously, there's ne obviously there's negative elements when it comes to 14's fan base, but in ge but in general, um, a lot of the fan base has been welcoming to to the new to this swath of newcomers, and I almost that too gotcha. much so. There have been times where people like Bellular and and uh, and Asmongold can't get into areas because of the amount of people uh, trying to travel around with them. <laughs> and it's not always, it, you know, it's not intentional griefing or anything. It's just a whole bunch of people want to be like there for their experiences, mm -hmm. and it's it's just kind of overwhelming everything and making it so he can't load up other areas. Yeah, I look um, in the case of in the case of Bellular, I look at that as a consequence of him of him documenting his experiences, which has been has been a treat to watch. Um, just see, just seeing the amount of enthusiasm he's he's had go he's had going through, um, ARR Heavensward and and most recently Stormblood. Mm hmm. And I'd say that I'd say that he that he had. That in in the ca in the case of both of them, obviously they're obviously they're very big they're very big names, and this kind of thing is inevitable. But at the vi at the very least, um, it hasn't been it hasn't been so much of an issue that they're ba that they're backing off from the game. Um, well, As Asmund Gold has this whole stop start thing, but we all know why that's the case. Right. Um, but in the ca in in the in the instance of Bellular, he he has to do he has to do his news segments all the time. Especially since he's do especially since he's got like three channels that he's met that he manages. Oh. Um, but I do think I do think that that you're going to that once Endwalker comes around, you're going to see another wave of people coming in. Oh yeah. Oh definitely. It's gonna be. <laughs> I hope I hope they've reinforced the servers. Well. About that, there was a crash, a server crash yesterday, and a server crash today, apparently, so... Server crash just happened today, actually. Yeah, uh, yeah. this is mid-game. <laughs> yeah, uh, I peeked in my 14 server, and uh, 
apparently my friend got kicked out during the, the middle of an important cutscene. So that's fun. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it's certainly it's certainly going to be interesting seeing seeing people seeing people delve for, delve further in. Um, and of course, uh, of course, as I alluded to earlier, I'm going to be looking forward to the salt that's going to come from scholars. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Oh, the th the other th I'd say I'd say the other thing that that'll be a nice little a nice little ca nice little capstone to the to this in to this endeavor is the, is the fact that if if what w if what we're seeing with FF sixteen is any indication, then the success of the success of fourteen is going to be a, is is going to be a, is going to have a ripple effect with the other divi with the other divisions in Square. Some some people had looked at FF sixteen and and noticed that the art design was very similar to um, fourteen. I look at the I look at this as an. Uh, as an acknowledgement that we're prob we're probably going to be seeing more we're probably going to be seeing more of more of the more of that more of that fantastical steampunk that was in the 8 and 16 bit era and a f and a phasing out of the of the more contemporary styling that we've that we've seen since since the series went 3D um, yeah because this this the style they're talking about is the same style that 15 had as well Mm -hmm. 15, 15 was fifteen was kind of leaning into the classical, but it was still it was still very contemporary. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm I know and I'm not going I'm not going to I'm not going to go I'm not going to entertain the idea the idea of of a apology like that one idiot. You know the one, Zan. Um. Remember the guy who Do made I... that who made that long ass video about 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 sixteen needing to be an apology. Oh yeah. That guy. Mm -hmm. Look, I look. You already you already know that I never that I never forget a single slight. Uh huh. And bad arguments is is certainly. <laughs> But because but because of that, I um I get I get the feeling that in the next few years I'm going to be asking for a, for a groveling apology from any from everyone who told me that JRPGs are a dead genre a decade ago. <laughs> I don't like the term JRPGs, but that's beside the point. Right. Much in the same much in the same way, I will constantly pick on Gigak about Mecha. If I ha if I have to rub salt in that wound for another ten years, I will do it. <laughs> he still insists it's dead, even with this particular season. Well, of course, of course he of course he does because because um pride is a thing. And like I t like like I said, he doesn't deserve his wife. <laughs> oh. At the very at, I will the kindest thing I can say is is that I is that I like is that he he's not mother's basement. There's my there's my good. Can I? Does that count as my one good deed? I need to get into heaven. That's uh, <laughs> praising with faint dams, monk. No. Eh, heaven was boring, anyways. <laughs> and with with that said, <laughs> I do want to give out a, a sincere thanks to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come to come on to to come onto the show and enjoy the watch. Um, spoiler zero. Thank, thank you for stopping by, and I hope I hope this isn't the last time you this you decide to swing around. Um, on Tuesday. Now, as far as what's coming on Tuesday, I will be do at 7 p.m. Central. I will be doing a watch party in the monastery um, Discord server, covering Cowboy Bebop knocking on Heaven's door. Because. I, because um, as tempting as it would be to rail on how bad the live-action Cowboy Bebop is, that's not my style. Um, on to on um Wednesday, um, I will be interviewing Centaur Games. The pe the people, which means I have to which means I have to deal with Malaysian time, lovely. Um, 
on fr on Friday the the um final class entry of Heavens and Heresies com is coming. And uh, and later that night I will be talking with I was talking with Mace. He couldn't he couldn't make it tonight. So I so I wanted to do a one to one with him to get hit to get his thoughts because he he had things to say regarding some of the expansions. Um, and on on Saturday I'll be interviewing Lightfish Games on the, on one of their campaign settings, and of course next week we will be doing Geek Geek Watch again. And for those who are fans of Tokusatsu, stay tuned. You're gonna like what we've got coming. But that is a story for another time. So until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk, and join the watch.